Fire up the pan and fillet the fish. What's up, Stokers of Stoke Nation? This is Chad Kroger coming in with the Going Deep with Chad and JT podcast. Guys, before we begin, I'll remind you once again that we are brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped, thank you so much for keeping our trims pubed, for looking after our hogs, for making sure that our dongs are looking fresh and clean. Because I know it doesn't feel like it in the majority of the country right now, but spring is right around the corner. And you know what spring calls for? Spring cleaning. And that does not just pertain to dust bunnies. That pertains to your pubes. Brad, are you doing spring cleaning? You know, I didn't think about that, but that's definitely true. And I, yeah. I, and it's hard to think about spring being right around the corner with the weather the way it is. But you're absolutely right. Yeah. Now's the time to prepare for that. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's never too early to start preparing for Cabo. Even during COVID, I don't know if you, you know, still get ready. Even if you want that mindset of spring. Get those pubes right. For sure. Yeah. A man for all seasons. Absolutely. So you use code Or a woman. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. This is not just dudes. You know, we're... Everyone can trim their pubes. Everyone has pubes. Little known secret. Yeah. A little factoid for you young buckaroos out there. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So use code GODEEP20 at Manscaped.com to prepare for spring. And we are also brought to you by um, Talkspace. Right? Is that therapy? It's therapy. Big, dude. Yeah, you're a big therapy guy. What does therapy mean to you? Everything. Right. I, I've gotten to the point where I can't process like minor problems without going to therapy about it. Yeah. But it helps. That's nice. I'm functioning higher than I used to. I mean, it's a luxury, but it's a yeah. nice one. Yeah. And if this is like an affordable version of that, I'm, that's fucking great. I'll tell everybody to do it. Hell yeah. Are you a therapy guy? No, not right now. I yeah. have been in my life. But right. Right now I'm doing okay. Yeah, I've dabbled. I, I, I've I, dabbled. Yeah, yeah, I'll go for like a session and I'll wait six years. Can I think that break in case of emergency. I think that works for a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. For me, it's like my go. It's just like the thing. I it, it jives with who I am. Right. Yeah. Totally. Well, if it jives with who you are and you want to get into it and you know that you know it's expensive and you want an affordable way to do it online, easy, easy to find a therapist. Check out Talkspace. Um, they're all certified therapists. They can help with anxiety, depression, relationships, and more. Talkspace.com. Use code GODEEP to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. All right. I'm here with my compadre, Jean Thomas. What up? Boom. Clap, stokers. And we're here for the third time. I believe, besides Strider and Joe, you're our most frequent guest. What an honor. Polar. Thank you. Yeah. I, love, I love coming. I, I'd come every week if you have me. Oh well, you're a fan favorite. I, I think we 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 check the threads and the and, you know Brad Fuller's you know behind you know Strider and Joe. That's the most I, common name. They, those they are the best guests. I mean, yeah. they really are. I love listening to them. I go you okay. above them. You do. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, JT. I love yeah. those guys too. I, I love them guys. too. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I see them all the time. Yeah, it's boring for. Yeah, I get it. I get it. It's it, you're used to it. Yeah, I see Joe all the time. I basically get what's going to happen. He's going to yell at me about something. Right now he says I got his mugs. Yeah. He says I lost two of his mugs. Really? Because he saw me here. He has a comedy store mug, and he saw me on a video drinking a comedy store mug here. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you brought it to the podcast, (laughs) and then you lost it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, it's all things comedy. Like, they have comedy store. Like, Brenton, who works here, works with the comedy store. I'm like, Mm -hmm. it's just they've made more than one of those mugs. He goes, nope. That was my mug. <laughs> Why don't you just get him another mug? I should. I should. I will. That's the, that's the move. I got him one. I got him one from my friend Jay Savory. Guys, buy his stuff that says, uh, don't speak to me until I've had my cup of cum this morning. That's disgusting. Right. So Joe doesn't want to drink out of yeah, it. No, I don't day. blame him. But It's a great mug. Jay's really talented artist. If you need help with a comedy store mug, I might be able to help you. Yeah, you got some connects over there, right? I do. I do. I met my wife there. You, did you know that? I met my mm-hmm. wife at the comedy store. Yeah. Yeah. Were you, so you were, you were a single guy, a man about town? I wouldn't say I was a man about town, but I was certainly single. I think we've had this. I think you've rebuffed me on that before. Yeah. yeah. Where, so where would you rank yourself in terms of your uh, man about townness? Not very high at all. Was dating tough for you? Uh, no, but I was always monogamous in like a serious relationship. So That's awesome. Yeah. So that, that always made me feel good. Were, you were monogamous even from like your teens on? Well, there were moments when I wasn't, but for the yeah. most part, yeah, I always liked having a serious relationship. You were a girlfriend cool. guy. I was. 
Yeah. yeah. And your sons are kind of the same way, right? They are. Yeah, both. Paxton is less so. Paxton is more of a man about town. Mm. Cameron is is closer to me in that respect. Do you get a vicarious thrill from seeing Paxton kind of work his mojo? <laughs> you know, I get a vicarious thrill from seeing Paxton be happy. Right. And, uh, you know, and I know when he comes in that, because he moved out now, so when he comes in the house... <laughs> And he's got that big grin, you know. He, you know, he's enjoying not living in our house and having, you know, having a good time. So that gives me a big thrill. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. That's cool. He's a charismatic dude. Yeah, I yeah. think so too. He's got yeah. that. He's yeah. spark plug. Yeah, for sure. I. Uh, it's funny. One of my buddies was like really struggling during COVID. He was like love sick over a girl, and he was calling all of us like a couple hours a night, being like, "I can't live without her, man. I'm, I'm fucked up." And like he was like, you know, started getting crazy, like drinking and stuff, so he could sleep and not think about her. And it, it got a little scary. And he had been seeing this girl for years casually while he was like, would call us and say he was in love with other girls that he was trying to right. see. So she was always kind of his like uh, backup plan a little bit or like his like, you know, backbone, but he had other things he was into. And then he was like, no, I'm in love with her. And we're like, dude, you're not in love with her. You're just worried about losing her, blah, blah, blah. He does a stand up show. He invites her. He invites another girl and he's flirting with the other girl in front of the girl he said he was in love with. And then I go up to him like, bro, are you really, you said you were in love with this girl for months. You were like crying over her. Then you invite another girl out and like flirt with her in front of the other girl you're supposed to be in love with. He's like, he's like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. But then I looked at him. I was like, you know what? I've never seen you happier. <laughs> like he was like. <laughs> but it sounds like he should go to Talkspace.com. Hey, that could work. Yeah. yeah. Don't you think? He hasn't confided in me. We're not as close of friends, but I've heard from not just JT, but numerous sources that are like, yeah, this guy came over and to talk to me about this. I'm like, that's weird because he came over to JT the night before to talk about that. <laughs> but I like, I mean, he's the he's greatest great guy. guy. He's yeah. the greatest guy. He's super he, funny, too. He did yeah. seem sort of like jazzed up. He's like, I got to tell you something. I got a situation on my hands. I, I really fucked up big time at this show. Right. But I think it all turned out okay. No, he's having a good time. Sounds yeah. like he's yeah. not very good at compartmentalizing his uh, emotional issues. Yeah, I think that runs the gamut for most stand ups. Uh, yeah. Right. Kind of uh, roller coasters. Right. Sure. Yeah. That's fuel. That's fuel. Mm -hmm. I guess it is, yeah. Yeah. I was I was just reading I was reading the Jessica Simpson book. It took me forever to read and like John Mayer basically would like date her and then break up with her and then like just kind of without um much reason why. And and she end up ends up thinking that it's because it fuels his music better. Like he can do his like heartbreak songs. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, the more he's unfortunate going through that, that, he, that he had to rely on another human being to to, to get <laughs> that his creative. Fuse a lot. Yeah, yeah. His fuel source. But uh, and and a, Picasso was like the same right. way. Yeah, I mean a lot of artists, right? For sure. Yeah. I mean you must see it firsthand, right? Um, I've seen a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean yeah. there are a lot of people who thrive on drama for sure. Hmm. Yeah. Both sides too, guys and gals. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see it happening. It's like a. Uh, a car crash about to happen, but for some reason, sometimes people don't see it when it's them. Hmm. You find that? I do. I just wonder if they like the car crash. They might. I don't get that, though. No, I know. That's why I love you. Yeah. <laughs> I want to avoid every car crash. And I that's do. why I love Chad, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm the same way. I, I, I like to just smooth sail right. uh, through life and just like, well, I don't know. I, but it causes problems for me, you know, because, uh, you know, if you're, if you're too nice to people, you don't want to, like, you know, talk about the the hard stuff or whatever. Confront the issue, then it, you just delay it, and then it blows up in your face. You know, I've every had that. single time. <laughs> yeah, so. it, nothing good comes from delaying a conversation that needs to happen. It right. never gets better. It only gets worse. Yeah. And, uh, and and by the way, not just in relationships and work too. I mean, right. when you have to deliver bad news, it's not easier tomorrow. Yeah. You only lose one more night of sleep, so it's worse. Yeah. But how many, but do you also think, is there a lot of problems that fix themselves just by you? Like, cause I think sometimes, and Chad has helped me a ton with this, is like a problem will come up and I'm like, man, we gotta like get on top of this thing and we gotta confront this thing. And then Chad will kind of be like, let's just like wait and see a little bit. And then oftentimes it'll correct itself just through time. Well, sure that happens. But as many times as that's happened, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. So um, I, uh, I produced a movie a long time ago and we had an actor who played a role who was actually a friend of mine, and he's a well-known actor. And he did a fantastic job in the movie, I thought. I loved him in the movie. Mm -hmm. And the studio said to us, um, we want to recast that role. It was two scenes. We want to recast that role, and we want to reshoot it. Mm. And I didn't tell the actor because I believed the person that the studio chose 
was so much worse that there was no way that that was going to exist in the movie. I just felt like someone was having a bad day, said, I don't like that actor, let's put someone else in it. And then when push came to shove, they would say, well, no, the first guy's much better, we'll go with him. So I never told the actor that that happened, that we reshot his scene with another actor. Mm. And when he found out, he has never spoke, that was 15 years ago, he's never talked to me since. And you know, I was hoping that it would play out the way you said, JT, where it'll work itself out. It did not work itself out. And I mm-hmm. lost a relationship with someone who I really liked, you know, the, this actor I really liked. When and, did he find, he wasn't at the premiere, was he? No, this movie luckily didn't have a premiere. It was horrible. but. Um, he, he, I think he heard from an agent or those type of things do get out eventually. They just do. And, uh, and so what I try and do now is I try and just be transparent to the, to probably to my own peril, but, um, I try and be transparent as, as much as I can. Yeah. I, I, I find issues with, um, people wanting you to do things, you know, for like a, podcast for example and it's weird that I'm on a podcast right now but people ask you to do a podcast but you know that they they can be problematic and they're just the way they are you mm-hmm. know and you're like you know, this is a friend of mine but like I you know this is, you know and there's stuff like that where I, I'm learning now just to say like ah oh, blanket I don't do any podcasts like just because like it's like how do you how do you articulate this to someone yeah how do you say like, you know like it's I don't scary wa- out there, dude. Like, right. <laughs> or hey, man. Like I, I don't think I don't want you to change who you are, but who you yeah. are doesn't jive with like how I'm trying to represent myself. And yeah, exactly. You're kind well, of a dumbass. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I just tell people this is the only podcast I do. It is. I've never done another podcast. I don't. Yeah. I don't. Honored. Honored to have no, you. No. This yeah. is a comfortable place. It feels safe, and you guys are. You, there's no. It doesn't feel like you guys have any angle or an agenda that you want me to come on here and. Uh, throw things out there that are going to get me in trouble oh, right. later. We're, we're long playing it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get you on epi- <laughs> yeah. episode, yeah. your 30th appearance. Okay. Yeah. By then, get you know, the we'll yeah. we get the yeah. juice on Amityville. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's not that much on that movie. That was a great, just straight down the middle. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's not one of them. It's juicy. <laughs> that's interesting too with the, I don't know, the information stuff, like how information can leak from, because it feels like that's very, I don't know, maybe that's true in all businesses, but it seems happens a lot in entertainment. Well, there's so much commerce in having information that other people don't have. That's currency, and so... That's Wall Street. That's what yeah, Gordon Gekko says. The that, ultimate right. currency is information, right? So so when someone learned that I had cast a different actor to play this guy's role, that's something you want to tell the actor. And if I would have played it right, and I would have said, hey, listen, um, studio didn't like it. We went with another actor. I believe in you and I'm going to do everything I can to keep you in the movie. And then if I can't, I'll call you. And I, that's how I would handle it today. Mm-hmm. But that's not how I handled it 15 years ago. Information is interesting. Like uh, we had a family friend who I adore. I love him. But like he would, he used, he'd get close to people, find out their secrets. And then he'd get close to other people by sharing those secrets with other people, you know? And he was like a fun guy to have around. So everyone would be like, would let him get close. And then he kind of used like intimate knowledge of people as his like currency to with other people. Seems kind of devious, doesn't it? Yeah, it was, but I don't think he was conscious that he did it. You know what I mean? So you couldn't really, I mean, you could, you could ask him to like get out of your life, but I don't think you could really like, it, it didn't really make sense to like be like, Hey, do you understand that you're doing this? Cause I don't even think it was so deeply woven into how he, right. into who he was, but but he should have just gone to entertainment. I feel like that would have been like, and I'll do it sometimes too. Like I love finding out like, you know, like stuff, you right. know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it, you do get like a little, uh, well, when you have something yeah. great, when you have great information, it, it does, it feels great. It does. <laughs> yeah. It does. You call your buddy like, do you want to believe what I just heard? Right. Yeah. And, and there are those moments in when you actually have something that other people don't know. Um, it feels good. It does. But then you have to be careful. Because it's all built on trust also, and whoever told you that, you don't want it ever coming back. So it's a balancing act. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, you got to be smart about it. Because like, I think my, our, our friend wasn't clever enough. Doesn't basically. sound like he was discriminating. It was, <laughs> he'd learn anything about anybody <laughs> and like, tell anyone else. And he couldn't hold it for very long. Right. And there's a like, oh, it was out. Right. Yeah. But right. you kind of, you're like, no, this is one I'm going to yeah. hold. I yeah. think sometimes there's more power in holding. Totally. Yeah. When you first got into the business, did you, like, did you have a certain level of naivete that that sort of got shattered as you went along, or like, <laughs> how's your um, how's your approach from the beginning? You can call it naivete and getting shattered, but I basically just got 
just it was horrible my first five years were just I mean it's it, it was just horrible I mean mm-hmm. I was in a training program at an agency and uh, you know back then it was not uncommon for my boss who had a Rolodex I don't know if you know what a Rolodex is but basically it looks like a Pirelli tire mm. and it had every phone number in it and um, she had one on her desk and I had an identical one on mine and she would say get me so and so and if it took me too long to flip to get to the card, mm-hmm. she'd throw the Rolodex at me. Really? So it only took me a couple months, and I just memorized every number in the Rolodex because I didn't want her to throw it at me. And she would throw pencils at me. She, like if, if I gave her an answer she didn't like, she would yeah. take pencils and break them and throw them at me. I mean, mm-hmm. it, was br- it was really brutal. My right. experience was brutal. And it, it doesn't, that doesn't, that stuff doesn't happen now, thankfully. Mm-hmm. But back when I, in the 80s when I was coming up, that was very common. Hmm. That 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 was tame. I feel like it still stuff. happens, right? I, it can't. No, it, that doesn't. <laughs> that stuff can't happen now. It's you know, it's just to you know, social media has changed everything, and uh, and I think in, in some ways it has made everyone rethink the way that they're treating other people, which is a great thing. And I think that uh, it makes you accountable if you do lash out in the back of your head. You have to think, you know, what, this isn't the right way to treat a human being. And if I'm doing that, I am putting my career in peril. And people have, and you watch it every day. People are getting canceled every day. I, yeah, I think people are better at the optics of it, but I don't know. I just feel like power just corrupts. Yeah. Absolutely right. You know, like I, it's a weird analogy, but in high school, the prettiest girls were always the most popular freshman year. But then by the time you got to senior year, the nicest girls, became the most popular girls because they had actually burnt the least amount of bridges and like all the pretty girls had like dated the same guys or had like you know I don't know just been kind of and probably with dudes too but I just noticed it with girls it was just like they just kind of burned bridges but then by the end of senior years the nice girls were just as as (laughs) evil as like a notch below but like still kind of went through the same kind of like uh like I, and to me, I used to say instead of power, I'd be like popularity corrupts absolutely. Well, like, listen, I mean, I think that there there is something to what you're saying. I but inversely, in Hollywood, much of anyone's value in Hollywood is their proximity to someone else that they want to that people want to get to. So right. if you're the biggest asshole in the world, but you represent the biggest star in the world, there's no consequence necessarily for that until someone comes out and says. This person did this and hurt me in a wrong way, and then suddenly people turn on you. That didn't used to happen. That mm-hmm. was not the case 10 or 15 years ago. Right. That's good. I think it is good. That's nice. I, I do think it's good. It's a, it's a, it, it is a, a better, it's, it's actually a corporate environment, whereas it used to be kind of like the Wild West. Mm. So. Did you, do you still, are you still friends with that boss who used to chuck shit at you? Um, I don't talk to her as much, but it's not because she used to chuck shit at me because I learned a ton from her. I really did. She taught me a, a lot. I, I just, um, our careers don't, you know, if she called me, I would take the, I, I'd love to talk to her if she wanted to put. Just a, life took you in different directions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. How did you adapt to to that? Like, like did you learn to just laugh at it? Like, how, how do no. you. No, it was devastating. <laughs> I wish yeah. I could tell you that I had great coping skills. All I remember is every yeah. Sunday night I would go to bed in covered in sweat. Right. Dreading Monday morning. And I'm yeah. just so grateful that I don't go to sleep that way anymore. I mean, I'm just so grateful because yeah. I literally, fr- like Sunday was dreading Sunday night, which was dreading Monday morning. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but I wasn't in it alone. And the people that I became friends with at that point in my career, I'm still friends with now. And it was kind of like it was our own shared warlike experience. Do you think that young professionals now are, are losing something because they're not subjected to yeah, having shit thrown at them? Well, listen, you know, I don't know because I, I try and think about, I guess, the skill that it taught me mm-hmm. that young the kids today aren't getting is it taught me to keep my head cool under pressure. Yeah. When things are flying towards you, if you can keep your shit together, yeah. that's probably a good skill to have in the entertainment business. Um, but, you know, um, I think that we all, you know, we all have to adapt, and the business is different now than it was. And, and um, fortunately, I don't think that a lot of people have to deal with that. And I don't think that um, if you can't treat your assistant 
poorly, then the system, then it, it stops. Like that, yeah. that cycle of abuse actually, I think, stops, which I believe is better for the business. I mean, totally. Yeah. But when you but when you mentioned it, I was like, I did grab to that detail where you're like, I memorized every number in the Rolodex. Yeah. And I was like, well, it might not have. For sure. You might not have had the motivation for that had you not had. But it's not. But but then maybe there's a cost to that too. There, like if, for if, me, JT, there was a horrible cost. I mean, I I hated my life. It was really bad. And it, maybe do you think it could have like hamstrung like you in other ways too? Like I think if if I'm in a place where. Like I worked an office job and I wanted to be like a creative person at the bit, at the company, but I wasn't in a, no one saw me that way. And I think one of the hardest things was when like, I started to believe I was the person that they saw me as, you know what I mean? That's not right. Which is not ideal. That's not yeah. ideal. And, it, and they weren't even being, there was, it was, they were hard on me, but as hard as they would have been on anyone in that job. Right. Yeah. So, but that, that was probably the hardest part about it was like, I was like, oh, like maybe I do have these limitations that these people think I have. But then what I realized is it probably just wasn't the right job for me. Right. And that's you know, what I realized. I just I, suck at fixing printers and shit. Right. And yeah. I realized I don't want to be an agent. Right. Because that culture is not a culture that I'm comfortable exhi- living in. Did you have friends who were totally cut out for it? A hundred percent. And they're doing great. It is fun. Like when you meet an agent who's like meant to be an agent. <laughs> I, I love guys like that. Yeah. yeah. They fire me up. Yeah. I remember yeah. when we, when we met our agents for the first time, there was one guy and it, um, there's one guy in like the room who had just the total like just the epitome of what you think like Hollywood agent he's yeah. like yeah we can take care of that and it just like fired me up for like a week I'm like that was because I'm just so the opposite right you know? he had this cocky yeah. face the whole time he's like yeah and he was kind of quiet and then I was like is it really hard to like transition like contacts from one place to another he goes it's very easy. <laughs> <laughs> he said it with all this, right. like, right. arrogant gravitas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But me and Chad afterwards were like, that was fucking awesome. That's yeah. cool, though. Yeah. yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. yeah. I've always admired that. It just, uh, just the, the people who have that kind of unflinching kind of confidence, I'm just yeah. like, how do you cultivate that? Uh, I think they're born with it. You know, yeah. It doesn't come from having Rolodexes. It's got to be. Yeah. And they're pumping you. themselves up in the bathroom. Well, that's they're, they're throwing sure. water on their right. face like, you got this. You can do it. You're the man. You're the man. Give them the show. <laughs> Fake <laughs> it till you believe it. Yeah. Right, 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 right. You yeah. guys love your agent. Dude, oh, yeah, yeah, dude. He's a great guy. All, all our reps. Andrew Kenward, killer. Yeah, and our managers, yeah. also killers. Great guys. That's yeah. great. And, and our accountant, too. She's it's been incredible. Yeah, that's yeah. been a huge. Got a strong team. Yeah, not yeah. to flex to the audience, but our team. We're just fired up on them. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry they, for flexing, but we're just fired up. Is that off. flexing? Just, I asked I the question. Know. I don't know that you're flexing. No, I don't. Yeah, but I, like, may just be but got it. I may just be but being sensitive. Way, but by the way, uh, people listen to this podcast because they are interested in your life. Right. Yeah. Good call. I think. I, that's why I listen. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. It's They're all awesome. They're yeah. all, yeah, great. Truly. And then. I, you know what I was thinking about with I'm, I'm like embarrassed now. I'm like, all right, let's 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 segue out of that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry. No, sorry, I love it. it there. You should sorry. push us more in that okay. direction. Sorry. I think okay. it's healthy. Yeah. Okay. Um, we do love talking about it. Yeah. Good. Yeah. If we're not on <laughs> mic, yeah. if we're not on mic, we probably talk about it all day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I I was thinking about this the other day. Like, so assistants are on the phone. They're on all the calls, right? Yes. So you totally forget about that. You forget when you're talking to like your agent or your manager that there's two or three assistants on every call listening. And yes. then the first, ten of every, the first 10 minutes of every call is kind of just talking shit, you know what I mean? Yep. Or, or it feels like it's like mandatory, like it's like, hey, we can't get straight into the bit, uh, into right. this, we gotta, you know, uh, make some jokes. But you're like, then I always remember, I'm like, there's other people listening. Well, you, the, first of all, that's true. And you should always be aware that there are other people listening, because there always are. Um, the, but the other part of it is, is when your assistant you're doing so many things at once. So, right, you're, you're responding to emails for your boss. You're responding to requests from your clients. So you're listening, but you get to the place after doing it for a couple months where you're selectively listening for what your boss wants you to do. Make sure I call so-and-so, send the email, then they'll say that on the call. But the other stuff, for me, it just kind of, just uh, through survival, I needed to be so efficient with my time that if they're just bullshitting, I, I kind of just checked out and did my work. Right. And so, but that doesn't mean that they're not on the phone and that that's definitely something to be aware of. I tend not to have anyone on my calls anymore. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I just don't need an assistant on the phone. And um, I don't, 
uh, it's just one less thing to worry about. If I need to tell my assistant something while I'm on a call, I'll just text them, which wasn't available to me, which wasn't available when I was an assistant. I'll just send them a text and say, do this or do that. But I don't want people listening on my calls. Do, do you even think about it? I do. Well, that's just because I'm dating an assistant. So I, I've seen, I've watched her work and I'm just aware Does she of it. check? But she's listening, but she's also she's doing a lot exactly of other stuff. exactly what you're describing. Yeah, she's multitasking. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've been in the room and, you know, just because she's working from home because of COVID. And it's all kind of, she's barely listening. Right. Like, it's just, she's just trying to schedule everything and just emails and it's just nonstop. So. And honestly, I think we're pretty wholesome. But yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I assure you there are many who aren't. No, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, dude, people are just yeah. letting it rip, and I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. It's just, you, you, I think they forget. It's almost like on the real world where you get used to the cameras being there. Yeah, you just you stop noticing. Right. And I feel like they're so used to being on these calls, and you never hear, you never ever hear the assistant on the call. They only connect to you, but they never. I've never once heard an assistant pipe in during a call. But I will often say, get your assistant off the phone. If I want to have a conversation. Right. So they think yeah. you're saying, and I know you're not, but they probably think, oh, Brad's about to say a bunch of off-color shit. Well, they, yeah. yes, they probably do. But I would rather that than not have the conversation that I need to have. And Get to brass tacks on it. Yeah, well, sometimes, it, sometimes it's not, it, it, it's nothing racy or anything like that. It's just you want to have an honest conversation about a client, and you don't want everyone to know what you're saying about a client. Like uh, if, if, if a writer blew a take that he pitched to me, I don't know that I want the assistant to hear me saying, here's what he did wrong. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't be as honest with an agent who I don't know well as I would with an agent who I do know well. But there, I came up with a lot of agents, so there's shorthand, and I don't need an assistant to go in to tell other assistants what I thought of a take. Oh, so you're I kind of protecting the writer, too. I'm protect. yes. You're trying to give it as little visibility yes. as possible. Yes, Because you know everybody's going to be chatting, and they're yes. going to be like, oh, they said the guy who wrote this And it harkens sucks. back to what we were talking yeah. about, where that's information. So then an assistant could go to another assistant and say, I hear that so-and-so is not getting this job that Brad Fuller is producing. And that's information for another assistant where the assistant could tell their boss, I know that so-and-so is not getting the job. Why don't you pitch someone else for it? It just, it, I think you have to be careful um, who knows what they know. So when, when there's like this level of like kind of Machiavellian information trading going on, when it, when it, when it doesn't work out in your favor, when it backfires on you, do you just have to kind of, I think what I'm realizing is like, do you just kind of have to be like, oh, it's just all a game. Like, it's just a, you don't, you don't really hold the other people or do you, do you judge the people who I did don't, that? I never judge them be, right. be, because everyone, because I would only judge, I mean, our, everyone is not always aligned and that's where the issues come up. If you're, if, if an agent wants a different person to get the job, and then I want to get the job. We're not aligned, and so it's just different loyalties. Yeah, so I never. It's never personal. I don't think that it's personal. It's just you, in the entertainment business, when someone else has a different agenda, you have to take that into account with the way you're doing business with that person. You just got to go in with your eyes open. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, and that happens a lot, but that's why I try and be transparent. And just say it the way it is and just not have as many assistants hear me do it. But I try and be transparent so that the, the game is not afoot. Hmm. Yeah, if you always tell the truth, you don't have to remember right. anything. Quotes like that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was a, that's a harder lesson to learn, but I think it's a better one. Yeah. You're processing that. Yeah, I'm just chilling. You're over yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I think, I think I do go into it with my eyes open. I do. I mean, I think we're both really like... Well, you guys are the beginning part of the, your career. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and no one's, and we're not big enough where it would like really behoove anyone to like backdoor us, you know? Well, by the way, when someone's backdooring you, they're not backdooring you. They're just trying to help themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's and, such a good way to think about it. But it's it. true. They're not, there is no animosity towards you. You know, that's not what it's about. That's never what it's, I, I don't think that's what it's about. I mean, yeah, there's a rare occasion where someone really wants to mess with your life, but that's not really, uh, rarely happening. See, I think sometimes I do project that onto it. I project on like, even though I intellectually agree with what you're saying, I'll be like, no, nah, this person's trying to like, fuck me. No, there's too many things to do in every day. There's just too many things. There just is. So, um, but they're trying to help themselves. Makes sense. Yeah. Love Everyone everybody. loves you, JT. You don't have to. Worry about <laughs> I just said I love everybody. That's so funny. And, and, we said that at the same yeah, time. Yeah, that's true. Everyone loves you. No one's trying to fuck you. I promise. <laughs> I love everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess I just feel like uh, I just feel like uh, in battle sometimes. 
Yeah, yeah but it's really not. No, we're making like Instagram and TikTok videos. <laughs> and they're hilarious. Oh, and thank I love you. them. Thank I, you. I, yeah. I mean, you guys streaking, that uh, was the ballsiest thing that I've seen in a long time. <laughs> it's funny because we got little nuts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's not why it was ballsy. <laughs> the cops. The cops. The, I mean, <laughs> I got nervous. I got nervous. I mean, that, that was a tense night. It felt like it was tense. It was tense, and, and we, we were out there all day streaking, and and our director, Dan, is he, he just kind of... JT, too, they're more... I think they they love that adrenaline. We're criminals. Yeah, you're not. And no, uh, but we we do get off on like uh, pushing the envelope a lot. Right, that scares and me. And they and they were they were they were they were pushing for it. And Strider and I were like, "Are you insane?" Like <laughs> you had the best when we when we were, we're all you know doing it like a jury on whether we should do it. And we're like, our director's British. He's like, "So what's the upside?" I think that if we potentially go out there, we can always say no. But there's a big opportunity here for a very interesting take. Yeah, and it's then, a very good accent, by the way. Thanks. And then I did mine. I'm like, look, I think it's you know this is what we do. We go into like the the most intense atmospheres and we try to get what we can out of it. Right. Then Chad takes a beat. He goes, I think it's moronic. <laughs> <laughs> and then you did that, it. Well, that's the thing. I love, I love da- semi dangerous activities, surfing, big waves, whatever. Yeah. You know, it, I just in terms of the danger I choose, I'm very selective, and and cops and riot gear is not the same as like a ten foot wave right. to me for sure. But I think we're different in that. Yeah, no, I don't we like all have we waves. all have our selective. But do you get scared when you go into that? I mean, are you terrified? No, I wasn't that scared that night. Um, because I well, I don't know because I. Yeah, just I wasn't that scared. But other things scare me more. You know, honestly, like Chad's a lot more bold with also like what he's willing to put out sometimes. You know, we all have like our different like uh, like Chad's saying. It's it's like you know, there's like eight different attributes of right. fear. And when it comes to like authority stuff, I'm not very afraid of authority. I always feel like I'll know when to like hold him and know when to fold him. I, I trust right. myself in the moment. I mean, even one time, like I was with my friend Greg, and because he was asking me about that video. And I saw like a car accident and I just ran towards it. Like we were walking to an open mic and cars crashed and I was like, I was like, get me in there. And I just ran to it. I just have always been, and like in high school when fights would break out, I always tried to like kind of, I don't know, get close to it. Right. Yeah. Well, like, um, what was I going to say? Yeah. And I'm all fired up now. Well, the, when we were in there, when we were doing it, I was like, oh, this is fun. I, I, I was enjoying it. I, you know what I honestly think about is, you know, w- with that, where I'm like, the, the, the possibility of being killed is, is a thing. I think about my mom. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that to my mom. Right. You know, that's what I, I'm not so worried about me dying. I'm worried about, about you know, breaking my mom's heart because I was streaking <laughs> in a And riot. you died streaking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the... Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that to my mom. You know? Right. My yeah. voice just cracked. My mom called me and was like, John Thomas, you need to get in there. Make the video. <laughs> she did? I mean, that's my parents. Like, you know, yeah. uh, my dad, my dad was like, uh, he, he he would have called, my dad genuinely would have called me a pussy if I didn't do it. And really? then, yeah, when I, I, I told him when I was doing open mics, I was like, yo, I got this idea, dad. There's this big comedian, Joe Rogan. I think I'm going to challenge him to a boxing fight. And if I make it around, he has to let me open for him. But I was like, that's a great idea. Do it. And he was like bragging to his friends about it. And then like, I showed him <laughs> videos of Joe Rogan, like just annihilating a heavy bag. My dad's like, JT says he's going to fight this guy. <laughs> and he was like, I think it's a really good idea. So what and I've did, had four concussions. Did that go anywhere? I never did it because I think I, it felt kind of a... Uh, I should still do it, honestly. I don't know why I didn't do it. I just... I don't know. I just didn't... I just, you know, we started working on our own stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a crazy idea, though. Yeah. It's a good idea. It was... Now a lot of people have the idea. You know, I thought he'd say no, and I thought he'd also feel too antagonized because I would have to go up to him at like the com. I was gonna like kind of ambush him with cameras and be like, "Yo, like, will you do this?" And I think he would have been really turned off by that. And I like right. him so much, I don't think I wanted to uh, risk alienating him. But and you know, honestly, at this point, it would be really scary. I wasn't as scared, you know, four or five years ago when I wanted to do it. But I don't know. He 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 could really. I don't want to get a fifth concussion. Yeah, no, you don't. It's not I've worth had it. three. I don't want to get a fourth one. Yeah, not worth it. No. And you'd have to go to Austin. We went to Austin recently. I saw that. What was that? You're traveling around to weird town, weird yeah, sounding we, towns. We we were shooting uh, it's upcoming commercials. We're doing so. We, uh, can we? Yeah, we can it? say. I think. Uh, is this a, for, wait, is this a big? Oh, or, don't say the brand, but we can say like the 
what division of yeah it's 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 a new hard seltzer oh and, really yeah and we basically partnered with them it's like a, a year-long campaign um and so we traveled to all these different areas to like shoot uh we, we got a bunch of stuff in the can i mean so fun yeah i think we got yeah. years worth of commercials that's yeah. crazy i didn't yeah. know that's what it was i just saw you were in interesting town interesting sounding towns yeah it was really fun i mean we yeah we went to all different kind of types of america you know pennsylvania georgia basically florida tallahassee austin and uh i loved it yeah it was great that's cool yeah. i've never been to those places and the yeah. people were so uh just uh fun to talk to and and really charming genuine so genuine yeah and our crew was r ridiculously cool too like the yeah. ad people were really cool and then our crew was you know it's how big director. was your crew it's like seven of us oh yeah. wow there's four eight of us four yeah, yeah i think eight, eight. yeah, yeah. Is, any towns that you loved that you would never I, I dude i might get a place and if i ever had to scratch i might get a place awesome. and no i was thinking that little town in pennsylvania we went to what, oh what, really what was it blue, blue balls? balls in blue ball really yeah there was something i'd probably just go there in the summer but i don't yeah. know there was something so charming about it yeah what's the origin of that name well it's when you um you haven't had sex and you really need to not no i get that okay but why did they name the town blue balls i think i think because it because of why i just said is there anything distinct about that town These that were, would create The revolutionaries that were young men. I got okay, you. So okay. what do you think they were thinking about so when they were So it's been called places, Blue Balls for 210 yeah, 50, uh, I think, like I think it might be Washington from the Civil like, War era, yeah. actually. Seriously? Yeah. I think Ulysses S. Grant's nephew, just this fucking horn dog <laughs> who had to leave West Point a year early to go help in the fight. Uh -huh. And he was like, man, I'm horny. And they're like, focus up. We got battles to win. He's like, I can't. I'm just so horny. And then they won the battle. He's like, they're like, what do you remember from this battle? He's like, just how horny I was. So we we shall name this town Blue Ball. Was that the like, most was that the most interesting name town that you were uh, you were at? Intercourse was probably the most. Where's Intercourse? Intercourse Climax. Right down the street from Blue Ball. I think, really? Well, Climax Georgia was interesting because the mayor was so on board with the innuendo. Mm. He's like, I'm from Climax. I just had intercourse last night. And we're <laughs> like we're like, Oh nice. <laughs> it's a population of like eight hundred or something. Maybe right. even less. But he was just he was really into it. How's the small dong rosé going? I think it's selling pretty well. Yeah, we'll have a new new promotion coming out soon. Oh, really? And new merch coming out. Really? Yeah. I should have wore some merch on this. I should. Oh, right. Shit. You look great. Yeah, but I should have wore some merch and. I like that jacket a lot. Thank you. Can I? You take Propecia, right? Yeah. Did you? Can I see your? your it looks amazing. Wow. Yeah, it's, it works for me. It works for me too. When did you yeah. start? I don't know. Long time ago. Really? Long time ago. Did you yeah. have, because I'm, I'm worried about my, uh, it's way early for this, but <laughs> that freaked out my girlfriend, I think, a little bit, because I was like, I'm going to go check my, get my sperm checked out. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I think, I think I was taking it before I had kids. Nice. I, 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 I don't even know. I mean, I don't even think about it. Because the one thing people say is that it could, it can uh, make your jizz count lower. Everything worked every time I tried. I so I, mean, I was two beast. for two. No, not really. But you know, um, no, I have no problem with that pill. It's been great for me. Me too. But you know, I mean, um, Mrs. Fuller would love me if I had no hair. Also, do you, do you? I mean, our culture at large is like so looks obsessed. But did you also feel like, hey, the better I look, the better chance I have of like getting these deals done? No, because I'm not working with a lot to begin with. So, I mean, you're I a good-looking guy. Yeah. I never felt part. It never felt like that. No, I. You know, listen. That was. Um, no, I never. That never entered my head. I just wanted to be. I just wanted to be smart and prepared. That was it. I just. You, did, be you never worried about that. No. How you're looking? Even being in LA no. all these years. No. Not really. Yeah, that's I good. Mean, yeah, I mean, no. I mean. I. I mean, I don't want to look bad, right? And. Um, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to gain the weight and I, you know, there's vanity with that for sure. I want to exercise and take care of myself, but I, I mean, you can tell I've never had a nose job or I don't do any, you know, I haven't, I've never done anything besides take Propecia. So you've never fallen into the, like the, the health craze kind of traps of LA, like diet, ex crazy dieting. You know all these uh, biohacking kind of things. No, well that no. didn't exist for me, right? So you right. know at this point, um, I think you know what I did. I did Prolon. What's you that? You know Prolon. No. Prolon is like a. Um, it, it's 
It's a five-day program that is like you're fasting, but you're just taking soups, and mm. it, it, it's like a, a healthy version of fasting for five days. I did that, and I felt pretty good. But beyond that, no, I've always, you know, just trying to eat healthy and exercise, and I don't know. I'm not really hung up on that. I'm really, I don't know. That might be the way to go because I'm reading like a, you know, a holistic diet book that some guy I surf with turned me on to, and Nick? it's like, no, Matt. Oh, okay. Nice. And, um, and I was reading it, they're talking about diet, and he's like, the importance of organic food and like all this stuff that's in like, you know, the food that's not organic. And so I'm like, and it, it was pissing me off because I'm like, this is too much. I can't, I can't think this much about food. You know what I mean? Where I'm like, when, when you describe how you stay healthy, I'm like, that seems even way healthier than obsessing about, is it organic? Is it, you know what I mean? Right. But, but I wonder, are you just wired that way? Because as long as I've known you, you've always been pretty yeah. into that stuff. Totally. Yeah, I mean, it turns me on. Uh, that. To eat you well and to jump into cold baths? Uh, yeah, just... Uh, and just to uh, figure uh, out ways to like get himself, like, if there's like a higher level of like a higher quality of life he can be getting, right. he's always going to look for that. I, I just... Well, I think that's, one, that's good. That, that's yeah. a good thing. Well, I think it's a search for everlasting stoke. Yeah. That, well, that, that makes sense to me. So going back to what you were saying, um, there's so much more information now than when I was your age. So mm-hmm. um, I was reading those books, this, this similar books when I was your age. I was, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I remember there was a, there was a book... Um, Fit for Life, and it was a great book, and it talked about eating fruit in the morning, and protein and all that. I was I remember being really into that, and I went through the Tony Robbins of it all, and that was super cool. And um, but at this point now, I, I you're gonna hate this, I, I, it, but I try and eat organic as much as I can. No, me too. But only yeah. because my wife eats organic, mm-hmm. and that's what's in the house. Well, that's always yeah. a smart. That's kind of my mind, like just surround yourself with people who do healthy stuff. Right. Just through osmosis, you'll you'll pick up most of it. I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I haven't had fast food in years, and not because I don't love it. It's just there's other choices in the house. Yeah. No, I I love eating organic, and I I try to, but you just read it, and you're like, damn, man, like there's just. But so. but sometimes like just today. So um, yeah. since COVID started, I've been taking vitamin C and mm-hmm. zinc and all those things Me to stay too. healthy. But then there was an article that came out in the last two days that they have no effect on COVID, right? And so I'm like, <laughs> don't tell me that, Brad. I'm telling you, I'll show it to you when we're done. It's like <laughs> zinc's it does, not doing shit. And cortis- I'm taking cortisone, cortisine or something to help the zinc. Uh, yeah, digest. I better. was doing that too. <laughs> I, t- I was doing I'm it too. Double JT. whammy in it. No article came out. It doesn't do anything. I mean, the the other part of it that's different now is that anything you read, you can read the opposite mm-hmm. that could be true, right? Yeah. I mean that, and, and so it's hard. I think you have to be selective about where you're getting your information from and, mm-hmm. and who you trust. And I, who knows who's right or wrong. I, it, sta- it just stands to reason that eating healthy is probably better than not eating healthy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whatever I, that means. I think just listening to your body. Right. That's the, like if you're, if you're on a diet that's supposed to be the cure, but you feel terrible. Right. You know, that should be a warning sign. For sure. Yeah. Unless you're in an ice bath. You, you love those. I love it. Oh, I could never do that. My, my neighbors think I'm weird. I'm, yeah, because I'm just always in there. <laughs> Seriously? And no, I do, your heart I do, doesn't I do it go, daily. Does your heart start pounding? I mean, I'm convinced that I bet I'll your kill. neighbors just feel like, I don't think they think you're weird. They, I think they're probably like, They think I'm flexing on them? No, I think they're, they're probably just looking at you and they're like, I should be doing shit like that. Wait, is it? it's in <laughs> yeah. your garage, right? It's I've in my garage. Video. So yeah. they see you getting into it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you uh, prepare the ice so that you, I mean, do you take the temperature before you go in? Um, so I have a, uh, a, like a temperature controller on it. So, it, you know, it's set to 32. Oh, so it'll turn the, the freezer on, you know, intermittently to keep it at that temperature. Uh, and then I unplug it when I get in just because of electricity. Uh. That is so crazy to me. I'm, gonna, I'm, yeah. I'm now going to drop a name and this really happened to me two days ago. Yeah. And it, it, it stands to, in support of what you're doing. I was in Montecito this past weekend mm-hmm. and, uh, I was walking down the beach. Now, I can't get in the water in Montecito. It's really cold. It's what, right. in low 50s, high 40s. I mean, it's really cold ocean. Mm-hmm. And I'm walking down the beach. It's beautiful. It's, it's like 430. And I'm not kidding you. Rob Lowe <laughs> walks right in front of me and goes right into the ocean. Mm-hmm. And 
this, the person I was with knew him and said, what are you doing? And he says, 20 minutes a day, I'm in this cold water. And it changed my life. It makes me feel great. Yeah. I do it every day. I can't even, even fathom that. But if you want to look as good as Rob Lowe, who looks amazing, I don't know how yeah. old he is, but he looks amazing, maybe that cold water is the answer. That could be the biohack right there. That I, I think it does something. I, th I think of all the things, that's the one that's like really makes a difference. Did, and you, did you ever do cryo? I've done cryo and I, I've done it once. We did it actually together and uh, well, not in the same thing, but we did, we went together and um, I, I don't think it's as, I think it does something, but I don't think it's as effective as just really cold water. I'm just and, terrified that I'll have a heart attack and die and that's what they'll find me. Well, I, I was scared the first time I got in. I, I like texted JT. I was scared because people were freaking me out. <laughs> like, I, I don't text that. me before and text me after, so I know it was So okay. what is the physical, yeah. when you get into the, well, you surf, so you yeah. are comfortable in cold water. And I've been doing cold showers for a while, and that, so the idea is that it's 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 good stress for your body. So if, first off, it, it when you get in, it constricts your, it's, it's a good workout for your vascular system, so because it constricts your veins, and then they say it pumps like all the, it just pumps all the, it just gets your, your blood really flowing. And you feel that when you do it. Um, you can feel like you, you get like a tingly sensation in your, in your skin. Yeah. And then when you get out, you know, you're, you're kind of red because your blood's just like flowing. Have you done it, JT? I've done it a couple of times, yeah. Do you like yeah. it? I do. I th to me, it's, I'm sure there's science that it, that it benefits you. And I also think just like, even beyond that, it's like you feel like you climbed Mount Everest right afterwards. Like imagine really? if you could, yeah, because you're doing something that's like, really difficult you're choosing to do it and you're going through like an extreme kind of experience like your body is but you get to a place like when you're a minute or two in where you really do kind of like relax and hone in and then when you when you get past that period of where you're like i gotta get the fuck out of here and you just kind of settle into it mm -hmm. i don't know i think that does a lot for you psychologically and then you get out of it and, you, and i don't know if i just it, it makes me feel good about myself where i'm like I fucking did some hard ass shit today. I fucking did an ice bath. Like, How long crazy. do you go in? I mean, we've done it a couple times, like three minutes. Three minutes, yeah. yeah. I didn't have enough ice in my mom's. I'd go into her freezer and I'd get like, she's got a bunch of like ice blocks from like someone who sent her like salmon one time and I, I'd throw them in the bathtub and yeah. I don't know what degree I got it to, but I, I, and the first time I did, I was worried about a heart attack. So I woke my mom up at two in the morning. I'm like, hey, can you watch me do this? She was like, yeah, I love you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah. But so you said something, you touched on it and I want to go back to it. Yeah. You said you've been taking cold showers for a long time. So mm -hmm. do you think that was, pr did you do that because you eventually wanted to get into an ice bath? Um, I think I just... I wanted the benefits of like cold showers give you similar benefits. Uh, not it, it's not as hardcore, but um, I mean, we interviewed Wim Hof and and right. before that, just to, to get into it, I did a cold shower like that morning, just straight out of bed. You know where your your body's not really prepared for it, and you just get in the cold water, and it just one. Th I think the the thing I love the most about it is it it, it helps with I don't have depression, but it lifts your mood. You know, and um, so it just helps you to, and you know, I don't know about the science of it, but I think it it releases endorphins, and so they say it helps produce uh, norepinephrine or something something like that, which helps with treat depression. So uh, the biggest thing for me when I did that cold shower before Wim Hof was I just felt great, and I felt happy, and I felt like uh, just prepared to take on the day. I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to take a cold shower. You really are? Oh, dude. No, you guys amazing. inspired me. Seriously, I want to yeah. try and do that because we'll I have call a... call you on the next pod and get please. you yes. to take yeah. <laughs> But yeah. I, I have a real aversion to being cold cold water. I right. just have never liked it. I don't love to go in the ocean unless it's like 75 or 80 degrees. So yeah, the, the, it's a real thing for me to get over. Also, if you look at surfers, like, and you know, there's so many things that go into their life. So I'm sure they eat healthy and they work out right. constantly. You know, they're, 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 they're you know really working out all the time. But if you look at like Rob Machado, Kelly Slater, Shane right. Dorian, those dudes are all in their 50s now. Yeah. They look amazing. For sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You think it's because of the cold water or you think it's because of the... Uh, I, well, uh, I, was, I was saying it's the cold water. It could be the sun. It could be the constant paddling. And yeah. then yeah. and then the lifestyle around surfing seems pretty healthy. You're just like, not to... Do you surf too? Stereotype, but they're smoking pot and eating fish tacos all day. <laughs> <laughs> Do you but, surf? No, I, I went. I just went back out there with my girlfriend like a month or two ago. And I, yeah, it was fun. I, I think I might start doing it more. Mm. It's fun. Yeah, it's great when you get That's up right. on a wave. Yeah, you're a part of that mystery, as yeah. Matthew McConaughey says in Surfer Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he says? Yeah, in the movie, she's like, "What's so special about surfing?" They play this Mishka song, and he's like, 
I don't know. It's like asking, why is the wind special? <laughs> and then he's like, he's like, you get to be a part of that mystery. Yeah. And when it's over, it's okay because you were in line and on time. That's yeah. cool. It is cool. I love that little monologue. And yeah. there, there's the you get that just straight shot of vitamin D. Yeah. And he just uh, that's one thing. Going back to the cold showers too, Wim Hof. I saw how genuinely happy he was at like sixty something, mm-hmm. where he's just like so he's just a goofball. Right. And I love that. I was like, I was like, oh, this guy's just having so much fun with you know with just life and that's what was i was like oh, i want that so i think i'm always kind of like searching for things to get me to that state of mind did people reach out after that pod and said they started doing it too i think a fair amount i think i think posting to my ice bath i've gotten a lot of inquiries of uh-huh. like how to build one and then people sending videos of them in cold water so that's I great I'm, i think i'm you know trying to continue whims we can continue Wim's mission for of sure. raising Stoke. Yeah, I mean he's he can do the splits. He's been through a fucking ton of shit in his life yeah. too. He's happy as hell. Yeah, yeah, and that's cool. A, he's a horny guy too. Really? He, he he. I didn't yeah. hear that interview. He, he, he's he, pretty horny. And he he says, detailed that, and he was like, "Oh, my cock is strong. <laughs> Get in the cold, and your <laughs> cock will be strong." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, they cut this out of the Gwyneth Paltrow episode." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, well, yeah. No, that's that's good. So you know, yeah. I'm sure that had a lot of people getting into cold water for yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, he's talking about ED. He's like, he's like, you see, it wants to punish you for something, but then you punish it. <laughs> And it'll never punish you anymore. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> wow. Just, yeah. That's yeah. cool. I think he had a hard on while he was talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm hard right now <laughs> yeah. with the strongest boner you have ever seen. At 60. Yeah, he's up there. Yeah. And he, does, he just he, had a kid or something. He does incredible things. I mean, he like, you know, climbed Everest barefoot and he like swam under, you know, a frozen lake. He, he's, he's doing remarkable right. things daily. Good for him. He's incredible. Yeah. I'm not. That would be different. Yeah, <laughs> let me know how it goes. I'm going to. Yeah. I'm, tomorrow morning, I'm going to do it. And I, before you get in, just say I love the cold. I love the cold. This will, you know, this is good for me. I think I have that mindset. Well, I did. I did for cryo me. for, and oh, I, you did. I, I did. I enjoyed that. I did yeah. that for, and then it just, you know, the world stopped, and I just, right. you know, that was that. I do. I do agree with Chad. I think there's. I think cryo works, but I, I'm a little more skeptical. Like actually getting in the cold things. There's something about it too that's so elemental. You know what I mean? I'm like, this is like ten thousand year old practices. Right. Or Hicks and Gracie, who people say is the greatest jujitsu yeah. practitioner ever. Um he there's videos of him doing like breathing exercises and like freezing rivers and stuff like that. Yeah. And he's in his sixties now and he's in incredible health. Yeah. But then sometimes I wonder, I'm like, are these just unique people? He is a unique person. Yeah, with Hicks and you're like you're he, just different breed of human And I think being, with yeah. Wim, too, like if we studied their genetics, even from birth, they would have some kind of, I don't know, qualities that are you know, right. exceptional. They're the ones where you take an x-ray of their spine and it's all curved and they feel no pain. As opposed but to me, if there's any, the slightest curve, I'm miserable. Right. Mm-hmm. But then he would say that that's because I'm not getting into cold water. <laughs> <laughs> There's pro- the truth is probably somewhere in the probably, middle, right? Probably, yeah. yes. To breathe. <laughs> yes. I don't do that. that we well. had like a uh, extreme long distance runner on here, this guy Keith Eckert, and he was like, great guy. I think he's about to go do his big long walk in Alaska pretty soon. And he was like, yeah, I just get hammered before runs and never bought. And then he runs like 100 miles. What do you mean? Like he does like, uh, what are those called? Like uh, ultra marathons? He does like ultra marathons, but he'll, Wait, he'll drink before an ultra marathon. That's insane to me. And to him, he's like, no, it just doesn't bother me. I think anyone could do it. I'm like, no, no, no. Like, you're. you're Does he look like a normal human being? Yeah. Yeah, he's regular size, but I mean, he's cut. Like, he's in really good shape. And he was almost a Navy SEAL. Like, he's, you know, uh, he's unique again. Yeah. Right. I don't think he's made of normal stock. Right, for sure. Yeah. And so, like, you know, you know, drink 12 White Claws. I don't run 100 miles. <laughs> but he's never had a Rolodex thrown on his just, head. Yeah, I just want right. to. Yeah, no, I don't think he could do it. Yeah, well. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Keith, I don't mean to yeah. underestimate yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Speaking about, like, the the industry, what, is this going to be, like, the Oscars? Like, who, has anyone seen any of these movies that are going to win Oscars? These are, like, plays. These. This is, like, winning an Obie this year or something like that. That's yeah, an off-Broadway it, theater award. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that's a, uh, that's a really good question because um, the thing that this year has taught me about my movie going is that if the movies aren't playing in movie theaters, I don't really, I'm not aware of them. And I don't know how people are. I don't mm-hmm. really know. You know, the, I'll have friends who will call me and say, you got to watch this movie or that movie. But there's, 
there are probably 150 movies that came out that I've never heard of, and that's n- usually not the case, uh, you know. And so um, I don't know how the members of the Academy are going to figure out how to do this because normally, you know, there's word of mouth and there's all these things, but the playing field is totally level. Like, there have been no marketing campaigns for these movies in a meaningful way where you're feeling it. There's, there's not screenings and all the things that there used to be to get people to come out and have tastemakers see the movie and talk about the movie. There's just, it's just kind of like it's all out there, and I have no idea how they're going to figure it out. I mean, have you seen anything that you think is Oscar-worthy? I thought the Sorkin movie was really good. Yep, and felt I agree. like, and it was the it was the movie that I saw where I was like, okay, this is like an Oscar movie. Okay, like I was like, you know, it's got a huge cast. It's about like you know, uh, important topical subject matter, and uh, you know, it's got a big writer director on it. Yeah, and then I saw Promising Young Woman. I thought it was really really good. I thought it was incredible. And, that, that's yeah. a great movie. And I, I didn't feel like a big budget. Like some of the sets and stuff felt pretty like janky yep. to me. But like the story itself was. And the incredible. acting was incredible. The acting was incredible. And I was like, okay, this is like kind of like a Dark Horse Oscar movie. Right. I haven't seen like uh, the uh, Judah and the- uh, I haven't seen that either. Yeah, I, I don't even know the name. And then, or the full name off the top, but I'll probably watch that tonight. But I think some of the other ones I saw, like I saw- Sound of Metal. Sound of Metal was good, but I didn't think it was quite, I thought the performance was really good. Mm-hmm. And then- and then the sound design was really cool. So yeah, it, I, see, but I don't know if in a normal year I'd think a sound of right. metal was. I'd feel like some you know Scorsese movie or, or Coen Brothers movie would knock that one off. And then a night in Miami. Yeah, I haven't one, seen that. I want to see that. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Right. Yeah, I, I liked it. And it's you know it's about amazing guys. But the hard thing with those kind of movies is they're all playing these amazing guys who, I've I've seen who they are themselves in pop right. culture, and I think it's hard to live up to that. Right. It's hard to play Muhammad Ali. It's hard to play Jim Brown. But, it's hard to play Malcolm X. But if you saw that, and this is the hard question, if you saw that movie in a movie theater, would you think that's Ooh. that's an Oscar movie or would you think that that's just a good movie? I think I would have just thought it was a good movie. But I think it it it, it would have been helped had it played in a movie theater. Yeah. Can I tell you what, his, what my viewing has changed during this in that I'm watching a lot more documentaries. Hmm. And like I watched the Tiger Woods documentary. I was blown away. I watched the uh, night the, the the night crawler or the night, night stalker. stalker. I mean, night, night stalker documentary. That was amazing, like that. And that's not normally the kind of stuff that I would watch. But the documentaries, I the Bee Gees documentary was like, so good. Oh my god, that was amazing. So their like, harmonies, incredible. So beautiful. Yeah. When they got the they're showing the production room and then they're like just isolating their vocals and stuff. It's incredible. It gives you tingles. Chad, you didn't see it. I didn't see that. But you I, got to see that the Bee Gees. It's just amazing. I gotta check that. Do you see the the Cecil Hotel one that just came yeah. out? You watch that one? Yeah. Is that the one about the water tank on yeah. top? Yeah, that's was, like was, a legend. I was so story. pumped to watch that one. What do you think? I um, I'm not the right person to ask because I made a Cecil Hotel uh, show a couple oh, years did? ago. Yeah. Oh, about the same thing. Mm. Oh man. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So. Do you think yours was better? No. I You're don't. such a classy guy. I, I love don't. that. I don't think it was better. But I know the story, so I, I come to it with too much, and it wasn't. Oh, so you're like, oh, they, they didn't put that part yeah, in. They yeah, didn't, they didn't give like a viewpoint I'm, to yeah. this janitor who I, had some interesting exactly. shit. Exactly. Yeah. Really, but the story it, itself is fascinating. Is there is there crazier stuff that wasn't said? You know, not that much. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. that, that's kind of the problem with the story. Like, it kind yeah. of, she was in the water. I don't want to give it away. But, you know, yeah. she was there, and no one really knows how, and they have that footage of her in the elevator. I mean, yeah. that's kind of. Where do you it. land on it? Um. I don't have an answer. I really don't, and I wanted to get one. I don't have an answer. Do you think something supernatural happened? Well, it's like when you guys ask me if ghosts can travel across the street, right? You know, I mean, um, I think that there's something weird. There's some weird energy in that place, for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. But I also think people go there seeking weirdness also. Right. And so if you're seeking it, you sometimes can find it. I do think if there is supernatural, I think L.A., Palm Springs, Joshua Tree, these areas are a little more... Definitely. They're supernatural kind of like uh, hot spots. Listen, I, I think I told you this. When we shot Texas Chainsaw Massacre, we shot it in a house that was 100, 100 years old or more, and uh, and someone had died in the house. And I'm telling you, when we scouted that house, I felt pressure, and it was weird, and Drew felt the same thing. It, you know, there, sometimes that is a, you know, sometimes you can feel weird shit and it's not comfortable. 
Yeah, so what, just like a darkness yes. descended on? Yes, and there was a lot of death in that house that we shot in. It was, wow. It added to the movie, but it was not fun to be in that house, especially at night when the crew wasn't oh. there. I didn't like that. Yeah. When someone writes you like a, a ghost movie, mm. do, you, do you care if they actually believe in ghosts or not? I don't ask that question. I just want it to feel real on the page. So um, if it feels real on the page, I assume that they do. Have you gone into Cecil Hotel? I have not. You haven't? I didn't want to go into that. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you know, they, they cover like tours that are I know. there. And they're like, yeah, it was disgusting. And so we just, we tried to switch rooms. I'm like, why don't you just leave? What, right. what is with these people who don't just fucking leave? I know. You leave. Yeah. yeah. Well, that that's uh, that was the joke about the Amityville Horror. Uh, the, I forgot who did the joke, but he was like, you think there's a ghost in the house? Get yeah. the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> don't stay in there and, and keep living there. Which don't is, wait and see. Yeah. I guess people get embarrassed. They're like, I don't want to sell my house because I think there's a ghost here. And then, you know, three weeks later, their child's been possessed. Right. <laughs> right. The, the right option is to sell the house. Or at get least to get out, out of that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking because I, I signed on to this new place and the, the person died across the street. And I was convinced. Like, my first night there, I was like, the lights are weird. I'm, I'm screwed, you know. Right. And it's been smooth sailing. But I was so thinking, far. I'm like, how am I going to get out of this lease? You know, when I sold it, I, when I when I signed the lease, and it's been an awesome place, like, exceeded my expectations. But when I signed the lease, I was like, I was like, you know, I might be in for a rough year. Because someone died across the street and you were concerned that ghosts were going to come and find you? I thought they were going to cross the street. Well, I no, you know, I, I was I was like, I was so paranoid about it because I was like, I asked like the, the property manager, I was like, no one died in here, right? And she's like, oh, and she's believed in ghosts. She's like, oh, oh my God, no. And I was like, okay, cool, cool. cool. Yeah, no, yeah. I, as I told you, I, I mean, I've never heard of it happening, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. Right. Ghosts crossing the street. <laughs> I don't know. I was just like, what if the ghost is hot? Dude, that's a big question, too. What if, well, what would you do if the ghost was hot? Well, I'd be, you know, a little bit more timid <laughs> in the house. You'd be shy, right. yeah. You'd yeah. Like come out of your room every day with, like, a button-up. Yeah, I'd come out with a button-up. I'd your hair uh, done well. I mean, I'd definitely behave more like a gentleman. I'd, you know, right. put the toilet seat down. And, that's nice. And, and do more crunches. <laughs> Hold the door open for the ghost before you leave. You're like, you first. Have you yeah. ever seen a ghost? Have either of you ever seen a ghost? No. I thought I'd seen ghosts, but I was just tweaking on Adderall. Are you sure that's what it was, though? Yeah. How do you know? Because <laughs> once I got off the drugs, they I stopped seeing shit. Yeah. But I literally, I'm, oh, I'd see spooky the shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm super afraid of spooky. I, I went to, my parents brought me to therapy when I was like five because I was having such horrific nightmares. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's so horrible. I'm, I'm real sensitive to uh, <clears throat> scary movies and stuff. But it's kind of, as I've gotten older, it's it's gone away from the supernatural and now it's more like a break in an entry kind of, like a, a regular That's what scares me. dude's going to break into the house and murder me or, or, you know, God forbid, hurt someone I love. We, yeah. You guys know this. That's why I have a Rottweiler in my house that will kill people. That's awesome. Well, that's cool. I didn't train him to kill people. He just, that's his natural way of being. If he doesn't know you, it's not pleasant. Did you meet him? Did, I don't remember. I or, no, we put him away. We put him away. Yeah, we put him away. Yeah, because, yeah. <laughs> but I'm terrified. He's not good with company? Um, he's getting better now, but he's, it's not been good. Do you like that, though? You're like, look, this isn't like one of those friendly pet him around. This dog I have, has well, a job. Wait, but you've met the friendly dog. Mm -hmm. I have a friendly dog, and then I have a dog that's not friendly. So at night, do you let the Rottweiler go downstairs? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just I do. And yeah. before the Rottweiler, it was a German Shepherd, and before that, nice. it was an English Mastiff. I mean, that's cool. I, I believe that I grew up in the era of the Hillside Strangler, and that was the most, as a kid, that was the scariest thing that that someone was breaking into houses and killing people, mm -hmm. and it was, and it felt indiscriminate, and it could have happened anywhere. And yeah, and I lived in a part of town where that was. That was not too far away, and it terrif it, to this day, it terrifies me. Home invasion stuff terrifies me. I got a great thing. I got this stick that my mom's boyfriend gave to me. Great guy, Greg. What up? Um, and <laughs> you, you hook it up to the door uh, knob, and then you push it down, and it can block the door from opening. It, like, stiffens when you open the door. Oh, that's cool. Really? It's awesome. That's cool. Mm -hmm. You could also put a Rottweiler on the other side of the door and accomplish many of the same things. I'm trying to get back into martial <clears throat> arts so I feel like if anyone breaks in I can Hadouken them out the f out the fucking window. What do you what kind of martial art are you doing? I want to do jiu-jitsu but I don't know how to do that safely with covid right now but yeah. I, someone we were talking about before the pod recommended an instructor. Yeah. So I I did watch Hicks and Gracie teach 
jujitsu back in the day. This was 25 really? years ago. Yeah, it was, it was an amazing thing to watch. I mean, he just so gifted and it, it, it's mathematical. Yeah, he's, he's really smart. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like the, the biggest jujitsu guy right now. I mean, how do you say he's the biggest? But, and I don't really know. But this guy, John Donaher, he was like a philosophy major at NYU. I think oh. he's a PhD. So he breaks it down. He's like, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a modality of systems, and sometimes right. I don't think he knows what the words mean, but he, he strings <laughs> Sounds like he a does lot that. of big ones. Yeah, yeah, but but yeah, but it's, it's hard to do that with COVID because you're in very close proximity to people there. Dude's breathing on me for yeah, sure. Uh, that, yeah, that's tricky in these days. I'm looking at pit mixes right now. You are. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for dogs. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, there's a huge waiting list for rescues, but and you want a specific kind. What kind well, do you want? Uh, well. And why uh, that? I, I'm not judging. Right, transitioned out of it, but uh, it's it's interesting. Which one? That you wanted a three-legged dog. Oh yeah. So I was, in Austin, I saw a three-legged golden retriever, mm-hmm. and it just like melted my heart. I was like, that's what I want. I want a three-legged golden retriever, but it's hard to find. That is a yeah. That's hard to very find. very specific. And so, but you could chop its leg off. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's best one thing. that you don't do that. Yeah, though. yeah. Um, <laughs> but I'm looking at like all the all the shelters, right? All the you know rescue. Uh, places right now and primarily the most available dogs are pit mixes and my girlfriend's dog is a pit mix and the sweetest dog of all time but it's jaw you know yeah the muscles are like three have you ever seen your girlfriend's dog go off uh not really no and at the dog park a little bit if the dog tries to mount her right she'll she'll be like "Get, get the hell off me but she's i'm not sure if she would i've never seen her go full full pit mode see I don't know pits that well and Mm -hmm. I I wonder what that is like I wonder when a pit goes is there no stopping it because that's the concern right I mean yeah my dad he's a surgeon and he he's dealt with hand surgeons so he's dealt with um attacks from pit bulls you know because people he he'll 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 do surgery on you know inmates and people in lower income areas so a lot of it there's meth involved and they aren't raising raising the pit bull right so He'll deal with a lot of those injuries, which are just like very traumatic and devastating. Right. Um, so yeah, that's the thing about pitbulls. I don't know. But my uh, I, my dog would go off, and it's not you know. I mean, yeah. Any dog can go off depending on what you know. I, I shouldn't say any dog, but yeah. a lot of breeds do and can. And so um, it's probably not specific to pit bulls. It's just when you uh, have a dog that you're taking with you everywhere you go, it, it, it's a concern of if it's an aggressive dog that can yeah. limit your ability. Like this weekend, we took one dog with us up to Montecito, but we didn't take the other one. Yeah. Yeah. So and that was sad. I felt bad about that. I thought I, I, I was sad that our other dog couldn't. No, he loves it. He knows he's like, he's like, no, I'm a fighter. They got to keep me. Right. I'm, not, yeah. I'm not meant to Make, be in the soft. You know, <laughs> right. like, he's, that's doing, exactly. he's doing battle ropes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's how he reacted. He's like, I'm a dungeon dog. Right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> that's how he talks. But I didn't yeah, raise he, him. I didn't raise him that no, way. No, it's, it's who I am. I'm right. a dungeon dog. All right. <laughs> you need me here. You need right. me. He's, you want me on that wall. He's smoking yeah. a cig doing battle ropes. <laughs> like, yeah. Have a nice dark, time. When it gets dark, he comes alive. He's like, this is my time now. He gets a little Bane-ish. Right. Yeah. I was thinking more Frank Grillo, but. Yeah, very, very Grillo. <laughs> I was thinking you sound a little bit like Frank. Grillo's the best. The man. best. Yeah. Guys, uh, my guard dog is here. Oh, well, let me see your oh, dog. Yeah. Come on, Aaron. Where's your dog? Let's bring him. All right, let me bring him. Oh, he's in the car? He's in the corner here. Oh, corner. <laughs> Can we see him? <laughs> That's kind of a bummer. Yo, I had a friend. What's his name? Hudson. I probably told this on the podcast. I had friends who kept their dog in their garage in the dark all the time. Oh. And they had drinks in there, so you go in there to grab a Gatorade, and then you see the dog go. <laughs> and I swear to God, they took the dog for a walk one day, and it ran straight into track, killed itself. Oh, God. Oh, that's horrible. Oh, sorry. It cracks me it's up. The wor- it's um, not that funny. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, it's not. Um, we're waiting for Aaron's dog. He doesn't want to? Okay. He, so I'm looking at these dogs, and I, I, I rewatched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Recently, Brad yeah. Pitt has a pit bull. Uh, he does, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, just the 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 self, the vision for myself of coming home and having a pit bull and then making mac and cheese. I think I'd have to do that. You know? yeah. Right, recreate. So the you're scene. holding out for a pit bull. That's what no, you're doing. no. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of at at this point. You know, I, I, I like pit mixes. My family is not so on board with that, but you know, and I also love golden retrievers. So those, I love Labradors too. I'm kind of open to. To most dogs, you got to do you point. though, too, bro. They'll come around once they get to know yours. Right. They'll 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 be like, oh, okay, you yeah. Know, they're just being well, that's, protective. That's the thing. Pit bulls, you know, there's a huge prejudice against. But once you, every 
pit mix I've met is like the sweetest dog. So would you bring oh. the dog here? Like today, if you had had the dog, would you bring the dog? Uh, yeah, why not? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Put him yeah. on the fucking table. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. Right. Be fun. You, are you getting yeah. a dog, JT? No, I moved. That was like my big thing. I was like thinking about getting a dog. I was thinking about like switching out my car and then I moved and I was like, I think that's my one big thing for okay. the, uh, yeah. I get exhausted from too much change. Yeah, I understand but, that. But I would like a dog actually because I, I do get lonely. You know what I mean? I think having a buddy there who like loves me unconditionally. Wait, you're living alone now? Yeah, and I'm so hmm. needy. Like I'm super needy. And a dog. Right. I like, you know, if I'm, if I'm exhausted in chat or like, you know, my family or my girlfriend, like I feel bad about that. I'm mean, not still do it, but like, right. you know, I got to watch it. But if, I'm, if it's a dog, I can, right. I can not cuddle that guy all day. For sure. Yeah. 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 I should get a dog. You should. But here's all my friends and family are like, you can't handle a dog. Why? Because I wake up late and I'm just kind of irresponsible. I'm, I mean, I'm on but top of But the dog could change you. I mean, the dog, That's knowing that there's something else to take care of, I think affects the way you think about it. Totally. And I think that's people are like, oh, like, because I want to have kids, you know? And people are like, I don't know if you're ready for kids. I'm like, dude, you rise to the, no one's ready for anything. You rise to the that's occasion. That's right. I totally agree with that. You should get a dog. I think I should. I don't Can know. Can you where you live? Mm-hmm. Yeah. As long as it's a small dog. I want to get like a 20, 25 pounder. Yeah. But if Chad's got a pit bull, I don't know. I'm worried about the pit bull just... Just Chowing down on just your dog, confusing, coming <laughs> in with its not, big not lats, to, you not know. To delve into stereotypes again, but yeah, yeah. yeah that, well. I remember my friends, my friend, my childhood friend Clinton. His dog came over, and our dog, and like we kept fighting. I was like, my dog's dominating your dog, and then like his dog like scared my dog in a fight, but then my dog pissed on his dog's face accidentally, and I was like, oh, Taz won, dude. He pissed on your dog's face. <laughs> <laughs> All of it is meaningless, but yeah. it meant something to it, you. It meant a ton to Clinton and yeah. I. We were very hyper competitive with one yeah. another. But you grew up with a dog. I did, yeah. Great dog. Big humper, Taz. Big, big humper. One, one of the all time. I think he learned it from the, as a horny family. Uh, that makes sense. Um, I wanted to ask you one more industry question, sure. too. I'm so you, you, you had a film, A Quiet Place, too, that's now been pushed to. to are, is, is, is this all right to talk about? Of course. So do you guys have like a date for it now? We do. I think the uh, I think the date is September seventeenth. Um, I think that's the date. I should know. Um, and are you guys like opening against like Top Gun now and like a bunch of? Well, other, I, we definitely won't open against James Top Bond. Gun because it's the same studio. So oh, Param okay. Paramount has us in Top Gun. Um, listen, that has been a very unsettling. Look, there's a lot of unsettling things, but it's like we we did this work. Um, movie came out really well. Yeah, you know it's great. That's the hardest part for me. And, right. And, yeah. so, and so all I can do is tell you it's great. I'd love to show you it's great, but I can only tell you that it's great. And, um, and we were so close. I mean, the movie was supposed to come out on March 20th. So mm. as we had the premiere on March 8th, and the world was starting to get a little weird. And I remember my wife saying we should take hand sanitizer because that's what they're saying you need. And, but we had a premiere. There were 200 people at the party. There were 350 people in the theater. And that was the last time that I was in a movie theater. And it's just a bizarre thing. And you don't, it's like you do all your work. You, you, we've done, so many people have done all the work and you just don't know what's going to happen with it. And we have that with, the, with there's, there's an, we have another movie called The Forever Perch. Hmm. Same thing. Don't know when or what it is. I'm just grateful that the studios in both of those cases are holding on to the movies and they're going to come out in movie theaters because those are movies, I think, both of those movies, especially A Quiet Place, need to be seen in a movie theater. Mm -hmm. What about, can you get into the economics of going to video on demand versus going into theaters? You know, I, I, I'm happy to talk about what I know, but I don't know that much about it because um, those deals are, you know, people aren't talking about those deals deals. They're being hush-hush about yeah, it. Yeah. So, so, I mean, like I had heard when Warner Brothers originally took the Denzel movie and put it on, uh, on HBO Max, that there was a huge outcry because, you know, a lot of people earn their money from the back end on the movies. And mm. if you put it on there, there's no back end. So they had to, what I heard is that they had to come up with a formula that compensated the, the back end participants for putting the movie on there. Um, and, and that's a different way of doing the business, for sure. And that's something that I hope, you know, I hope that movies go back into movie theaters and people go and see them in the way that they did. I mean, the, you know, in China now, the numbers are really good. People are going back to the movies there. But I ask you the question, would you go into a movie theater and see a movie with, full of people with people coughing and sneezing and doing all that? Or, 
or when do you think, if the answer is no, when do you think that if, if you were vaccinated and everyone you knew was vaccinated, would you do it then? Or is this, you know? I think if everyone was vaccinated, this is coming from someone who was the most afraid person at the beginning of this thing, too. Yeah. Like, I did crazy things trying to avoid getting the virus. Um, but I think if everyone was vaccinated, I think I'd be okay with it. And then, uh, I don't know, are, are theaters going to start, are there going to be more like outdoor options, you think? I know we can't, you know, retrofit the entire industry, but. Well, um, well listen, you know, for again, if we're going to talk about A Quiet Place, that is a sound-centric movie. And you can't create the same acoustics outdoors as you can in a, in a box. I mean, that's what, what yeah. makes that movie sing. So um, I'm sure that's available and people will see it, but that would not be ideal for me. I would want people to see it in in a place where the right, where the room was built for sound. If I were vaccinated, I'd, I'd go in a second. I mean, we were in Austin and stuff. They had gyms. Yeah. I, I, that's one thing is people are like, when, it, when things go back to normal, you know, are people going to be able to like adjust? Or are they going to? And I'm right. like, in my experience, you know, being in like Texas and stuff, yeah, like I was walking by bars that were like, you know, they're outdoors, but they're fully open. Right. I didn't even notice for like two minutes. I was like, oh, right. yeah, that's something I haven't seen in a year. Right. And that, so I, 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 I'm pretty optimistic that things will return to normal as as quick. I mean, I think people want it so badly that I think it's, you know, may, you know maybe in places like L.A. where people are a little bit more anxious about the virus and stuff, it'll be a little bit less so. But in the majority of the country, I think it'll be pretty quick yeah and it'd be like you know people always reference the <clears throat> roaring 20s like maybe people yeah. will be in such a hurry they'll see every movie too right. you know yeah. what I mean? like if theaters came back that was a huge part of my life i'll be like yeah. i want to see every movie in theaters right and there's yeah. a lot of movies time. that they're holding on to that people are going to be interested in seeing I mean, it's going to be a stacked year yeah yeah so but but what effect does that have on the business you know if if, right. if a huge movie is coming out every other week or every week you know uh, are you taking money away from each movie by doing that, you know, and not staggering it. So I don't know what the release schedule is. Nobody does. Um, but when a movie it goes straight to HBO Max, it, it, I shouldn't say this, but it feels different to me that, you know, and the urgency to see it is not the same when it's in your house, but it's certainly more comfortable, you know? Well, that's like with the Oscars this year, even last year when Oscars were nominated, that went straight to a streaming service. When Oscar movies, you know, when movies were nominated, I was, I was, to me, it was a little bit, I was kind of like, well, that can't really happen. Right. <laughs> you know, I was like, I was, uh, it just weirded me out too much where I'm like, I don't know if like, if a movie that went straight to streaming can really. They feel smaller. Uh, yeah. They, they don't feel it, it. It it felt indie in a different way. But then you have Godzilla versus King Kong coming out and Dune, which are huge movies. Are those going straight to streaming? Well, no, they're going to be in theaters right. and on a, a, but, HBO. But all those directors are pissed, right? I haven't spoken to them. Listen, but I mean, this is in the trades and stuff, right? They're like Denis Villeneuve. Like, I mean, that dude's like, you know, he's a major filmmaker, and I don't think he. he I can tell you this. He, he might didn't be, make, I don't know if that's true of him. I'm just using him as an example, but he seems like a little Nolan esque, where he's like, "Look, I have a very specific vision for how this movie should be seen." I guarantee you, he did not set out to make that movie and have it end up on a streaming service. He and wanted it, like most filmmakers. He's an artist. Yeah, yeah, they wanted their movie to be seen in a movie theater, but that can't happen now. So, what's the next best thing? Is the, mm -hmm. really the question, you know? Um, you, you know, and and, and these but so you had to make a call to be like, hey, we'll wait for theaters, right? No, it wasn't my call. I wish I could tell you it was. It was the studio's call. But I think our movie is unique in that. I keep coming back to it. It's so sound centric that you, the movie won't have the same impact in a home as it will in a theater. Mm -hmm. And about, I think, and th um, thankfully, the studio... Oh, sorry, Aaron. Sorry, Brad. What about drive-ins? I mean, sound um, systems and cars well, are getting... Yeah, I, you know what? Like, I don't... Drive-ins wasn't even anything I considered yeah. up until COVID, right? I mean, that just seemed like a little fringy thing that was happening in other places. So I don't know how... It, are, I don't know if drive-ins are... Like, I haven't seen a drive-in... In forever, have you seen a drive-in? Or Aaron, do you have one near your house? I don't no, know. No, I had to drive an hour I right went to see Tenet at a drive-in. And how was the sound? Sound was good, but still, that movie was too heavy to see at a drive-in. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're in your car, that's just you're asleep by the second act. Yeah, it's distracting. I mean, no, being in a car. It wasn't that. It was more just like the. It's so dialogue-heavy to understand the science in the movie, like 
But no, but Christopher Nolan doesn't understand. Yeah. Just... <laughs> but JT <definitely>. said that. <laughs> no, I, mean, dude, I swear to God, if he was on this podcast and we gave him three hours, by the end of it, he's like, hey, can we run that back? He's like, I'm, I think I'm finally starting to get it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't see that movie. It was a gigantic just clusterfuck. I mean, <laughs> he's a genius. You know, I'm, I'm, I admire the man deeply, but I think he was... I don't know I think he needed some. I think he he didn't write it with his bro. I think he needed other people pitching him some ideas on it. Would be my call. I got it from my you. lowly vantage point. Well, no, I, I mean, listen. The, the great thing about movies is everyone has an opinion about. Them. Yeah, but that's also a case of a guy. Well, I don't know if Nolan has this kind of pull, but like forcing that into theaters and then drive-ins instead of pushing, you know. Well, listen, I admire him for, for what he He kind really of desperado it. Yeah, but he was willing to take the hit because he believed in the way that his movie should be seen. And you got to admire someone who is willing to throw down and fight for their art like that. Yeah. What did you think about the Tom Cruise rant? Um, I want to think about that. First of all, I am a huge Tom Cruise fan. Of course. Um, I watched Top Gun yesterday nice. from beginning to end. It's a great movie. It's so good. You know, I, I think that when you're a producer and there's a lot of jobs on the line and a lot of money on the line, um, your job is to be a leader. Now, I'm not sure that I would lead the same way that he did. I don't know that I would unload on people like that because I've had that happen to me as we've previously discussed here. Um, but I certainly understand the sentiment and not wanting people to get lax about that at all because too many jobs and too much money is at stake. And is he as him the way he represents himself in the in the rant? It's like he, he you know he's saying like I'm like you know kind of like the tip of the spear for this whole industry, and everyone's like looking to me to like set the tempo. Is that true? There is some truth to that. I think. I mean, certainly for that franchise, he's a, he is that franchise and has been and and he is the face of it, and it's a huge franchise. And um, I, you know, he's not. He he strikes me as someone who never wants to fail. And um, I think that if his movie got shut down because people were not adhering to the rules, he would see that as a failure. Yeah. I just, you know, it, it, that rant, um, that, you know, that was, a, that was a big rant. You know, he went off, and, and I, I can't imagine he wanted people to hear that, too. So, um, I, I've got my own theory that he put it out. You do? Mm-hmm. Why? Because... I think it's such a Tom Cruise thing for people to hear. They're like, because it was such like a, and I, I, I was, I was more in favor of it than not, you know, because I was like, I was like, yeah, you know, like, you know, protect the set and get the movie done. Uh, and it was so like, Tom Cruise would be like, yeah, people would need to hear this. That's I, interesting. I, th I think that's like, interesting. I never thought of that. I really yeah. didn't think of that. I, you know, I. Uh, well, and you know who leaked it, right? You'd be like, all right, it was either the sound guy or like an editor. Like, how many people have access to the? Uh, maybe on a movie that big, there's like thirty. But I feel like you'd be able to pinpoint pretty quickly. Oh, that's interesting you say that because I thought someone just did that on their phone. Oh, someone probably did it on their phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that I don't think anyone in the sound department would leak that because it would be so simple to say that the, who did it, they're <laughs> done. So, <laughs> who, who leaked yeah. this? Right. So <laughs> someone just hit record on yeah, their, their I, I memos. Think, yeah. Yeah. But um, listen. He is, he's a force, right? And he's a leader, and that's how he led. Have you seen successful big, because you've seen like huge directors. Have you ever seen like a huge director who is chill? Or for the most part, do they kind of lead? Is is there a lot of, um, what's the word? Do you kind of have to, at least as far as you've seen, kind of be authoritative in a outward? And You know, I think that... I. Listen, I, I, I think that when lives are at stake, and my closest experience was with Bay, because you know, I worked with him for 20 years. You know, Michael, Michael takes very seriously the responsibility on set safety, because he's doing huge things, right? And you cannot be soft-spoken and be blowing shit up. The There's way about that he 50 does. cars to like yeah, flip you, into each yeah, other. You have, to, you have to know exactly what everyone is doing. Everyone has to be dialed in. And a lax attitude is not going to create what he creates. So, right? if, so when you're on set, if Michael like would roast someone, were you the guy who would like then no, go up to that? I guy? never worked. I never produced a movie that Michael directed. We just produced movies together. Uh, okay. So I was never on set working on his movies. I was on set as a as a. I would go there to visit him. 
But I mean, like, are you good cop to someone else's bad cop? Depends on the situation. There have been times when I'm bad cop and the director's good cop. I mean, um, I have not worked with a lot of directors who unleash on the crew, but we're making horror movies for the most part. I mean, you you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a more intimate thing. Our movies don't have tons of stunts and whatever. In the two Turtle movies that we made, the, both the guys who directed those movies are just great guys, you know, kind of soft-spoken and um, f- kept it light and fun because that was the tone of the movie. Oh, that's nice. So I've never really made an adrenalized Fast and Furious type movie or Armageddon or one of Michael's you know, Transformers. So I, I haven't worked with directors who have to manage 300 people. Yeah. But I think that that's a hard thing to do. I bet. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think I'd be snapping I'd off my, all the time. Yeah, I, I, I think it would probably not, my personality would not thrive in that situation in the same way. But I, I want to make those type of movies for sure. I mean, in my career, I'd like to make one movie like that. Um, I'm I'm developing a movie with Chad Stahilski, who did the John Wick movies. Oh, cool. oh, nice. And he's like a super soft-spoken Nice, great guy. And I don't think you've told us on here, but can you talk about how you guys met? Chad? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, Before I was producing movies, I was producing shows for pay-per-view television. Um, And probably in 1990 or 91, I was doing a martial arts show. That's where I met Hicks and Gracie, was actually on the show. I interviewed him for this this martial arts show that I was doing, which was basically a wrestling version of the UFC. So... I think they're up to like UFC 280 or two something, but UFC one, their first one, came on the air at the same month as my show, which was called Sugar Ray Len- Sugar Ray Leonard's Fight Zone, which was a wrestling version of the UFC, and Chad Stahilski was my fight coordinator, mm. and so he hired we hired a bunch we shot it here in LA at the Palace Theater, and Chad hired all the fighters, so we I was working with all the martial artists that Chad knew on the west side of town and. Uh, and we were orchest- we were chore- Chad was choreographing all their fights. I mean, he was an incredible fight coordinator, and that's how we met that was a long, long time ago. And now we're working together. That's so Again, cool. Yeah. There's supposed to, there's John Wick is there's a fourth one coming, right? I think there is. Yeah. Yeah. And is there? Are they, I don't know if they've shot it, keep it yet. Going? Going? Yeah. Why not? It's a great franchise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they've created a world there. I'm I love the John Wick movies. Uh, I think they're fantastic. Incredible. Yeah. I love. Yeah. Them. I love them. It's, but look, at, what about Keanu Reeves? I mean, the greatest c- the career. Well, we were, we were talking to someone about, they were like, who, who's your favorite action star? And it was like Arnold. And I threw Bruce Willis in the ring because I yeah. was like, I was like, he's the everyman. Sure. You know, and and, and uh, the sleeper was Keanu. But know, it's not even a sleeper. I know. It's like we, so many when, when, you, when you think about it, yeah. yeah. Speed, Matrix. Yes. If you're going by movie, Point Break. he's the best. He's, like, if you yeah. take someone's top five action movies... And with him, you do the first two John Wicks, Point Break, Speed, and then The Matrix. You're like, I don't know if anyone can take on that five. Yeah. Arnold, I don't th- right. I don't know that anyone can. Well, the Arnold would be what? The two Terminators? Predator. Predator. Commando. Commando. Yeah, you need like <laughs> one of his. Commando. You need one of his. Like, and True Lies. True Lies. True Lies. Yeah. Conan. Yeah, I think that's it. But I don't know if that's as strong as Keanu's. Yeah, that's tough. Well, and listen. Arnold would be the. He's the gold standard, I think, but, for that shit. But I think that also Lethal Weapon and Die Hard. So the, good. The, so good that... Mel, Mel Gibson's a good action star. I watched Braveheart this weekend also. It's an amazing movie. Amazing movie. Great Amazing action that it too. got made. Amazing that that movie got made. Yeah, and like Apocalypto. I mean, yeah. the guy's a freak. Like, he yeah. makes crazy-ass movies. He does. <laughs> but going back to what you said about Keanu, I guess he has more varied franchises mm-hmm. that... That have that will stand the test of time. He's the thinking man's action star. He definitely is. He's the Zen action star, which is kind of nice. Do you think someone has to go like a, a a public figure actor has to go through that kind of roller coaster to be as beloved as Keanu is? Well, I think that there is longevity. Mm-hmm. Longevity is rewarded more than anything else. If you've had a career for that that spans decades, I mean, right. that's that's magical. Yeah, and it's so hard to do. And he has. As we've said, he's had hit movies in every almost every decade of his life. It's and crazy. who else? There's not a lot of people who could. And the movies, it's not like they're getting worse. They're yeah. all good. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah, he's finding his groove even more. For sure. But I think there's something to what you're saying that, like, we love them more for going through the highs and lows with them. Yeah. Like, he was a punching bag for so long. Yeah. Like, when I went to film school, everybody would be like, 
you know, I don't want to cast like a bad actor like Keanu Reeves. And I'd be like, well, then why do we want to watch him in everything? It's not because he's bad. He's yeah. not bad. No, he's, there's something to him, right? 100%. Yeah. percent. But, but yeah, I think, I think there is something to that where it's like, even I was thinking about Steve-O. Like, right. I think we all love Steve-O more because we saw him at his worst. Like yeah. him at his worst is, is on video. We can watch it. And yeah. So you can but, watch him huff and paint trying to end his life basically. And now we see him looking handsome and got it together and he's like giving advice and he's like a real dude and you're like, I yeah. don't know, it's, it's, it's meaningful to go through but the Keanu's whole But Keanu's never thing. went through a low. Like you never read a headline about Keanu. That's true. He, like somehow he has it all buttoned up and stays yeah. out of the press when he's not working and is there when he is. I think, he, I think yeah, I feel like he is just genuinely a really good guy. It feels like I that for so. sure. I've yeah. never met him, I don't know. Knock on wood. Yeah. yeah. Jay, we want our heroes to later, be that way. Jay, Jay yeah. Moore on his podcast said that in between takes on Street Street Kings, yeah. Keanu would be reading Chaucer. Yeah, like really? he'd pull out like a six hundred page book and just and you, decompress. He would eat weird things too. Like he would eat like he said something. He like broke out like a huge steak or something. Oh, I, really? I, I forget the details, That's but fine. it was like yeah. So have, have we decided on this pod that Keanu is as good as it gets in the, in, that, in that genre in the action movie? I still. Do you still yeah, think Arnold? I think it's Arnold. Okay. I'm sorry, Keanu. No, I think, it, listen, it's certainly worthy of its own pod. I, I think they're I think they're, they're different because it's, there's Arnold, uh, the thing about Arnold is he's so, his, his physique is so perfect and he's just so, it's just, he's reached a level that's unattainable. Right. Whereas Keanu is, and Bruce Willis and like Mel Gibson and Lethal, you know, you're kind of like, oh, I could see myself rising to the occasion. Normal physiques, you know? they're all shredded, but they're normal. Right. Yeah. 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 Whereas Very Arnold, angry. you're just like that guy's a tank. He's awesome. But like right. the other guys, you're kind of like, you like, 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 especially like Bruce and Die Hard. You know, like, yeah, he's having marital problems, you know, but now he's, now he's in extraordinary circumstances, and he right. can pull it off. You know. I think. So I don't know. My, my argument was in an action movie to, to truly be the greatest action star of all time. It's how you walk with a machine gun <laughs> when you're mowing down henchmen. Yeah. And no one, like in Commando, I think is the best example of that. Arnold's got like 250 caliber machine right. guns and he's just cruising. And he, 100 guys are trying to kill him and he's just relaxed, just mowing them down. Yeah. And I think he could pull that off better than any other actor in history. He can, but no one can run better than Tom Cruise. Oh. And running is a big part of it too. Tom Cruise in a sprint, it's pretty beautiful. It's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Tom Cruise's movements too, they're so exact. Like, yeah. you know, that last Samurai Collateral. I mean, he moves with like yeah. marksmen. And we, we met some stunt guys on Hawaii Five-0 and the first thing we asked were like, yo, what's up with Tom Cruise? They're like, he could be the best stunt guy in the industry if that's what he wanted. Well, he hung off that building yes. in, in uh, Dubai. Dubai. Who else would do that? I mean, that, have you ever, if you, I saw that building. I was scared going up in the elevator. He was outside the building. I think he like he needs to be in a rom com, but find a way to add the stunts into the rom com. <laughs> Has like, he ever yeah. done a rom com? Jerry uh, Maguire, I guess, is closest. I guess. Uh, that movie Night and Day with Cameron Diaz. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's a good call, Aaron. Right. It's, Still a good, it's a good, fun little movie. Too. Yeah, it is. James Mangold. Well, I, yeah. I think what he did with his hair in MI2. You loved it. Yeah, I mean it's unmatched. I, I don't think I can think of anyone. With Wait, was that long hair. hair or short hair? Long hair, but on the motorcycle fights and right. the rock climbing, you know, he just he flipped it. Perfectly, oh, that's right, that's right. Know? That's the one that opens on the rock climbing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, like the best opening scene yeah. of all time. And then, um, and the and the and the motorcycle when he like spins around and his hair would like, like flip around his face, but it was like perfect. He's just like. <laughs> It was I'm like, dude, how do you do that? Right. He's beautiful. Yeah, yeah his star quality hair. For sure. I love it when he gets mad at uh, Thandie Newton in it. Yeah. When she's like, you stay alive. He's like, she, she shoots herself with this shit. He's like, why did you do that? Yeah. He's like, I thought you didn't care. Oh, yeah. you who doesn't care about anyone. And then she's like, I guess I lied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I lied. <laughs> that was powerful. He's That's like, where it's from. You stay alive. No, you stay alive is from uh, Last of the Mohicans. Really? Yeah, it's a she. He's he's got to jump off a waterfall. She's about to get taken by Magua, I think, in the bad. Uh, oh, because I I've never seen that though. So how do I know that quote? He might say, "You stay alive." You stay alive. I will find you. No, that's the Last of the Mohicans. It is. Yeah, I'm calling. Maybe not. Let's look it up. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Because because she injects herself with the uh, right. Maybe it's both with the um, uh, Chimera. How'd you pull that? 
Uh, I've been studying Greek. Oh, Greek, yes. Yeah. yeah, that makes Bellerophon, sense. Bellerophon, right, Chimera. Yeah. JT's right. Oh, it is Wow, true. you're amazing. You really knew that. I mean, my brother and I oh. say this to each other, you know, oh, well, every time we have dinner. Well, okay. I, 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 <laughs> it might be in Mission Impossible, though. I, I feel like it is. I don't want to take more time. Well, but, well yeah. I can cut it up. Am I to uh, Fanny Newton Chimera injection scene? <laughs> okay, here it is. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that's the one I was talking about. What do you think the, you were doing? I mean, look at the way he twirls there. This is like, sorry, <laughs> but look at this twirl. I mean, they can't teach you that you in acting doing? school. They can't teach you to spin like that. Just try to stop me. So good. Just stay alive. I'm not going to lose you. Oh, oh my uh, God. He says it in both movies. He said, I'm not going to lose you. I'm not going to lose but you. But it's the same thing. But he does yeah. say you stay alive. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. Dude, the way he throws that thing, he just shoots so it. So good. He's so good. God. I wish I could have been an action hero. I mean, wouldn't that be cool? The best. I got to pee real quick. Um, you guys can start. All right, we'll start answering some, uh, some cues. All right, dearest brothership from another mothership. Many blessings to. Do you oh, do you want to do an ad first, Chad? Oh right. And then I got to be out by nine thirty, but we will be. Where are you going? I'm just supposed to. It's the latest I can call my girlfriend. Okay, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, wouldn't even care, but it's more me. What's up, guys? I'm interrupting this podcast to let you know once again that we are brought to you by Talkspace. Talkspace, thank you so much for sponsoring the podcast, for being legends, and for helping out the Stokers with all of their therapeutic needs. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, we all felt like it would be only a few months, and it was all temporary. But now, being a Q-teen is kind of a way of life, and it's incredibly challenging for everyone's mental health. Uh, yeah, guys, I mean, this has been a tough year, and it's okay to say it. It's been tough on all of us. You know, uh, you can feel overwhelmed. Uh, I mean, the news can get you down. Well, what's gotten you guys down? Just the pressure, the uncertainty. All, all of it. it. Yeah. Shit. I'll say it. Yeah, yeah, all of it. Yeah. And sometimes you feel like you need someone you got to talk to. I mean, you're, For sure. you're a huge proponent of therapy. Big proponent. I call yeah. you guys sometimes really when I yeah. when I, I call you. I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 I, I FaceTime you because it, it feels like a better connection. I love oh, it. absolutely! Yeah, um, yeah. You, you know, you got to talk to someone, whether it be your buddies or to a professional. That's when Talkspace, where Talkspace comes in, because they got um, affordable therapy, uh, a therapist network with thousands of licensed therapists with years of experience in over forty specialties, including depression, anxiety, substance abuse, trauma, anger management, relationship issues, food and eating, and so much more. Talkspace is secure private using the latest end-to-end -end bank grade encryption technology to store client information and comply with the latest HIPAA regulations. I don't know why I just said there, but you can trust that your conversations will be secure. Um, and you can talk and you can send and receive unlimited messages with your therapist and you can get the help that you need today. Um, yeah, I went to therapy uh, a couple times. Uh, and uh, it really just helped to put some things in perspective. I, I, in the few times I've gone, it felt like, you know, I just felt like a release. And it was like, and, and I think no matter where you're at in life, it can be beneficial. What was therapy done for you? I mean, it changed my whole life. I don't yeah. think I'd be able to handle it. And now I can, back in the day, like one problem that would have fucked up my whole day or month or mm -hmm. like maybe I wouldn't even been able to handle that one problem now I can juggle like 10 of those problems right yeah like I have so much more shit going on and I can handle it much better because of all the therapy I think that's awesome I think so yeah yeah hey doesn't get any better than that so as a listener of the podcast you'll get $100 off your first month of Talkspace to Matt talk with a licensed therapist go to Talkspace.com or download the app Make sure to use the code Go Deep to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. Um, we are also brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped, thank you so much for keeping our trims pubed. 
for looking after our hogs, for making sure that our dongs are looking fresh and clean because um, we're in the thick of winter and a storm's are brewing. It's like one of three inches in the forecast when you trim that hibernation bush that's taking place in your pants. Manscaped specializes in products to make sure you're walking around town with beautiful snowballs, and that's talking about your nuts. Um, you know, they got the lawnmower 3.0, ceramic blade, advanced skin safe technology. You don't have to worry about cutting yourself down there, which is crush, especially, you know, guys. I mean, when you start doing this stuff, it can get messy, but that's where Manscaped comes in. You can stay safe and trust these guys around your package because they also have the perf- the performance package which is the best buy of 2021 that comes with a lawnmower 3.0 the weed whacker for your nose ear and no hairs trimmer performance boxer briefs and a travel bag oh that's nice and um we got crop preserver crop reviver ball toner lots of stuff for your balls make sure your balls smell good look good don't get cold feet this winter. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code go deep at manscaped.com. That is 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code go deep. That's our ads for the show. Let's get back into it. Let's go. Nice. First cue from Jack. Dearest brothership from another mothership. Many blessings to Chad, JT Strider, Big D, Joe, and of course Aaron, the straight up legend. Been in a relation for over two years with my now dank GF. All is stoked, but I have one quest that keeps turning the perpetual wave I'm shredding to a straight up buster. I'm committed to showing my very small dong all around the cosmos, and in this case, I've been trying to give it the chance to explore the dank booty of my GF. This is not something I've never got to do with any past female, and since I'm stoked on my GF, I'm in a conundrum. When I bring up the subject, she laughs and says if I wait 10 years, it'll be on the table. The the reality is, I think she probably isn't down. (laughs) You think? <laughs> Ten years? Well, also, he's, like, he's like, I think she's playing me. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't be so frustrated, but plot twist, she did this particular deed with her last BF, so I'm kind of beefing that she isn't willing to share a dank booty with me. Well, it sounds like she didn't enjoy it that much. <laughs> I understand this may be petty, but would love your advice. I mean, it would get to me too. Your dong only lives once, and I think experiencing the different opportunities of love making in the world is important as fuck. I also suspect she maybe doesn't enjoy it, so that's something I need to consider. Yeah, brother. I love my GF, but curiosity is feeling an entire an in, internal fire that is getting hard to tame. Any advice on how to deal with this? I think offer to let her play with your booty. You know? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. because it's uh, she could probably feel like oh, you just want to you just want to get in there without any regard for how it'll affect the way I feel. Right. You know, like you you're just trying to get yours, and you could be like no. Explore, explore what's going on with me. Right, I, I'm willing to make the sacrifice too. That's ingenious, actually. Oh, dude, thank you. Good for you. I appreciate. Thank you, Brad. I really nice. like that answer. All right, dude. I, I think also like I, I get too horny sometimes, and and I'll be like, hey, like I really want to have sex, and that never ever is arousing. You know what I mean? I think if you put pressure on someone to do something, they're not going to enjoy it. You know what I mean? If they do do it, it's going to be out of obligation. So. I don't know. I would just be super nice. I'd be nice and put no pressure on her all the time. Just be the best boyfriend in the world. And then you hope one day she'll surprise you. Yeah. That's also good advice. You guys are good at this. I think that putting pressure on someone to do something they don't want to do, is that's never going to it resolve work. itself in a good way. Yeah, it just doesn't work. Yeah. So. And it's just shitty to do. So I don't know, man. It sounds like you really like her. She sounds cool. I like her response. 10 years and it's on the, on the table. It's funny. It's cute. Um, she needs to see a, a, a huge commitment. Yeah. <laughs> and, dude, if this is your biggest problem, you're doing great, man. Yeah. Middle of a pandemic. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> guys, I come to you in desperate times. The world's on fire, and I can't have butt sex. Right. Yeah. I'm like, brother, I hear you. Right. Um, all right. At what point is it a lie? What up, Pod? I'm overflowing with Stoke right now. I just took my height. I'm 25 years old, and it turns out I grew in the past year. I thought I was done growing. I thought I was 5'8 and a quarter. But I am now five eleven and a half. <laughs> wow! <laughs> what? <laughs> That's not possible. <laughs> There's like that happened to like two people in history. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Um, 
Last time I took my height was about two years ago at the DMV. I just realized a pair of pants I got tailored six months ago are too short. So I took my height, and it turns out that I grew recently. Holy shit. I always told people I was 5'10", even though I was like 5'8 and a quarter. I thought it was close enough to 5'9", and 5'9 is close enough to 5'10". Now I know for sure that I'm 5'11 and a half. I was never insecure about my height. I got a good jawline, and I'm tall enough, so I was never really insecure about my looks. My mom just told me to tell people that I'm 5'10", so I went with her judgment. She's telling me to tell people I'm six foot now. I'm trying to decide if it's too much to lie and say that I cross over the line to six foot. I don't want to talk shit that I can't back up and embarrass myself. Also, if I'm close enough, what's your take on telling people your height? Isn't it pretty apparent how tall you are? I mean, that's not the kind of thing that you can really fib. I mean, do you guys think I'm 6'4"? No. No. I'm 5'10". <laughs> I mean, how do you lie about your height? And yeah. who cares? I don't think anyone's ever asked me what my height is. That's what I was thinking to do. I, I rarely ever say my height. Unless you're super tall. Seems really important to this guy, though. It's a big deal on the apps if you're dating. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, right. Ah, I see. If you put six Again. feet, it opens the world up to you. Like, Well, Aaron, how tall are you? You're probably, I bet you're six one, six two. No, I am I am just a hair under six feet, so I, mm. I crossed the six foot threshold. Mm. I, I would say you're six foot. I think this guy's tall enough to say he's six foot. I also think maybe him lying about his height manifested his growth right you know what i mean oh, because he was thinking positively and he was aspirationally getting taller and it and caused him happened. to live up to it i used to i don't have this policy anymore but i used to say that if i told a lie if i could make it true before the other person found out it was a lie that it was just good motivation so that's a great that, that's yeah. A, yeah i like that so they'd be like where do you work i was like oh, i got a job at this place but i didn't have a job there yet i was just uh, uh, applying but i was like all right well now i better get that job Yeah, but this guy's a medical yeah. marvel i mean he grew almost three inches at age 25 it's insane. Yeah, I, I would. I would. If if you're looking to put that in your dating profile, I would put that in your dating profile. Right. They, like right. I'm, I, right now, I'm five eleven. Who knows where I could be <laughs> next summer? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, that's better than saying you're six. Yeah. Right? Tell me yeah. what your limits are, and I'll stop growing at that height. Right. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't <laughs> want to date anyone over six foot. Like I promise you, I won't get taller than that. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah I got that kind of control yeah. over this thing. That's yeah. cool. My yeah. body's crazy. <laughs> He might he might want to see an endocrinologist. Uh, just a thought as well. Why uh, do you say that? Uh, there, I I went through this with fertility. Um, there's a, a quite a spate in our generation of of men of for, uh, pituitary mm. um, tumors and things like that. Oh boy. Yeah. So. Um, so you, you can check that out. Maybe you, maybe you have a good one that's... Maybe he's got grow. the best one, right? Yeah. yeah if he's got one of those things, this is the best one you can get. The doctor's going to be like, you lucky fuck. You're getting huge. Yeah, <laughs> potentially. Next time he emails in, he's going to put on 30 pounds of muscle too. And <laughs> dong. Maybe it's dong, you know. Is he, he's, or, or he's being pranked in some way very specific. I think his mom put him on the limitless pill without telling him. And that's she's just cool. been putting yeah. that into his cereal. And pretty soon he's going to be like, hey, I, I'm writing you know, music like Mozart and now I can do, you know complicated math like fuck dude <laughs> figured out crypto. i want that pill yeah yeah are, right. you, are you a crypto guy are you yeah i have a little like? crypto oh you do sure bitcoin or I have Do a are you a doge guy no, no no i uh i have um i have a little i have a tenth of a bitcoin how cool i have a little ethereum and a little litecoin oh that's cool but what i did a couple of weeks ago or actually two or three months ago is that someone told me that if you you can schedule it so that it'll take it take an amount of money out of your account and just buy it every week? So I'm buying every week. I buy a hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin. Nice, That's cool. And so and, and of uh and of Ethereum. I might get into it. Yeah, it's completely foreign to me. Well, it's it doesn't. Yeah, it, it's foreign to me. But I do feel like every day it feels like that is becoming more and more of a legitimate, real, real thing. I mm -hmm. think so. Yeah, absolutely. I think I, I, yeah, I'd like to dabble at some point. Go, baby. Yeah. Keeping Stoke <laughs> around couples when single. What up, Stoker? Sorry for the long email in advance. I've got a beach trip coming up in the next month for me and the boys for spring break of college. These are the guys that I have known for a very long time, and they're like family. I'm super pumped to chug beers and party with all of my good friends. I'm writing to you guys because recently I've gotten out of a serious long-term relationship after finding out she cheated on me a few months back. Oh, I'm sorry, man. 
My problem is on this beach trip. Most of my fellow brothers are going to be with their significant others and celebrating the good weather and beach with a babe in their arms. I, on the other hand, will be empty-handed for this trip, with almost all the single girls that were previously coming having bailed out. And I've been thinking about how this might affect my stoke. We rented a house with about 15 to 20 people, and we have it for the entirety of spring break. And I was just wondering if you dudes could give me any advice on how to keep my stoke tanks, my stoke levels high while being surrounded by couples on the warmer weather endeavor. Also, would love to know Chad's favorite song to get pumped up to before he goes out and surfs. Thanks, dudes. Love the pod. Fuck Boozia. Uh, favorite song to get pumped up to... I would say I think I'm in love with you by Jessica Simpson. Nice. Great song. Yeah. How's this dude stay fired up? He's in a tough spot. Yeah. I don't think he's in a tough spot at all. No. I love that. I I I you know, I um I had a friend who was single and he liked to travel with me and Mrs. Fuller and um w- the three of us went to the Bahamas and he met a girl there and spent the entire trip with that girl that he met in the Bahamas. And then when he left, he left. And that was kind of the extent of it. It was kind of this magical, romantic thing that he had with this woman he met there. And that was it. And this guy, he's limiting his uh, his opportunity to simply the 20 the, or, you know, the people that were in his house. But if he's going someplace for spring break, there's going to be a lot of people. There. Even with COVID around, though. But, well, I guess that's true. I don't, you know, I don't think about that. But well, if it's, you can meet that one person. Right. You meet that one girl who's got the antibodies or has been vaccinated. But, yeah. Yeah. Sure. The degree of difficulty's up, but dude, you know, magic happens and you gotta be you gotta be open to it and you're He's not gonna be the only single guy who's going on this trip that's gonna be wherever they are. Did he say where they're going? No. Oh. Hopefully it's like a hot spot and it's not like, like Myrtle like Beach or something like that. Some sick like that. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree. I think that's great advice. I, I think he I think he's th- anticipating uh way too much misery. Right. You know, it's like it's like Maybe if you think about it in the sense that all the other people you're going with, they're with couples, their trip will be kind of predictable, but you're, you know, the possibilities are endless for you. Yeah. I mean, who knows what's going to happen? So I would just embrace the uh, uncertainty. I'd like to overset my boundaries and say I'd like this guy to write back after his vacation and hear how it went. I'd love that. Is that okay to say? Uh, no, we don't hear enough follow up. I really, I, I, but when we do, it's always very fulfilling. Yeah, and oftentimes, it works out really well. Yeah, I'd like to hear how the advice is taken and what came from that. Nice. Yeah, I'd like I, to hear that too. Yeah, I'm results oriented that way. Let's go. All right, Brad, are you ready for the last segments? W- what are we? Uh, yeah, beefs, babes, and legends. Oh, sure, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're a vet. But I wasn't. I'm, I'm not prepared, so I'm just gonna off the cuff. Do you want to go last then? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Chad, who's your beef of the week? My beef is, well, I'm excited you're here, Brad, because it pertains to movies. So I think you'll, my beef is with the lack of erotic thrillers out there this day, hmm. to, today. Um, you know, I, I watched Basic Instinct a week or so ago. It's delightful. I mean, it just, it got all, everything flowing, you know, I, I was just like, I was so pumped up. I was like, this is awesome. I was like, I don't really know many erotic thrillers that are out today. Like, they, these are movies that just I don't see that often anymore. And, and you know, it's like, I just wish we had a modern day, just horny Michael Douglas, you know, being a detective and, and doing his thing with Sharon Stone, you know, just manipulating the fuck out of him. And, uh, yeah, I think that would really fire me up more. Fatal so. Attraction, too? Fatal Attraction. You know, Man, I, My I, wheels are spinning. Yeah, I, I have to watch that, too. God. Um, the ro- are, erotic thrillers. That's a great beef. Thank you. And no one, I've not heard of those type of movies being developed or... Really? The, for You know, in, in, on the level that you're talking about with yeah. great actors and real yeah. production value and directors. I got to get into that. Yeah. Gone Girl was kind of the last... Yeah. yeah. And then maybe a simple favor, the Anna Kendrick one. But Which that one even a, was a little campier. Yeah. yeah. I like that movie. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a great beef. Chad, yeah. may I recommend one to you? Yes. It's a movie course. from the late 80s, early 90s called Shattered. Ooh. Tom Ooh. Berenger, Bob Hoskins. Oh, Ooh. nice. It's huh. a really good one. All right. You know, it's another good one. There's one with Ray Liotta and Kurt Russell, where Ray Liotta is obsessed with Kurt Russell's wife and Internal Affairs with Richard Gere. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. And uh, Andy Garcia, that's a very intense yeah. one. That was a great era for that. Um, my beef of the week is with the website Cora. I guess I'm subscribed because every day I get emails from them, and they're just like, um, 
they're always about narcissists. I don't know, maybe I like like something that was about narcissism, but it's always like, can a narcissist ever like be better? And the answer is always no. <laughs> And I'm just like, I'm getting these emails. I literally get, I get them like once a day. Yeah. And I read them and I, I have like some narcissistic tendencies. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. And I just, I always click it and I'm like, it's like, what will a narcissist do in a relationship if you tell them the truth? It'll like, he'll devalue you or he'll leave. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? Is that true? Every, I mean, like, isn't there like degrees to this shit? But I, I got to unsubscribe to Cora because I'm just getting just, just bum, bum guarded. Bombarded? Bombarded. Did you say? Bumgarden? I think I confused it with Madison Bumgarden. Oh, okay. Bumgarden, yeah, the, what's his name? Almost my last name. Yeah, and I confused it with Aaron. And then that, that really good pitcher from the, the Giants who was always nails in the postseason. Bum, Bumgarden, yeah. Yeah, he's a beast. Yeah, um, yeah so I'm getting Bumgarden with all these questions about narcissism, and I'm, I'm just going to unsubscribe. Makes sense. Brad, who's your beef? Mine's, the, I don't want to bring the show down, but my beef is just with the news. I, I mean, I'm reading that COVID's going down. Then I'm reading that there are seven variants and they're much more contagious. And I simply don't know where to look to get information that uh, on where to be on this. Are you experiencing that? Like, it, totally. it's conflicting information. And I don't remember a time in my life when there was so much of that. And uh, it, I find it really confusing. And they'll find something to like upset the conventional wisdom every day. Like the New yeah. York Times today was like, you know, most people agree it doesn't affect children that much. And then today the New York Times is like, kids with long lasting lingering effects right. from COVID. You're like, dude, come on. Like we thought right. we had this one safe pocket of the right. of like our population and they're like, No, don't don't get don't get cocky. Yeah. Like kids are getting fucked. I'm like, dude, I don't need, I I need a little dude, I even read one guy was saying that this this new variant from South Africa is more deadly. Right, I, uh, right. But the scientist that they were referencing in the article said he was only 55 to 75% confident about that. But that was the entire basis for an entire article from like right. a major publication. I was like, this is insane. So I don't know where to look anymore. That's my beef. I don't know where to turn for my news. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think you're right. I think that's what we all feel. Yeah. Sorry. No, no it's, that's I don't to bring it down. COVID, I mean, yeah, I saw, the, I saw how much the numbers were going down in California. And I mentioned it to someone and she was like, so, yeah, well, they're expecting another spike in the spring. Right, like, so your stoke goes up and it goes right back down. Yeah. Like, no, I'm stoked. We're at 55,000 cases today when yeah. we were at 200,000 a right. day a month ago. Like, yeah. that's great news. I know, but then the and next article... Sorry. The next article is about the different variants and all that. It's like, I'm I, taking my zinc and vitamin C. For sure, I'm sticking with it. <laughs> Me yeah. too. I'm, I'm ignoring the press on that. Chad, who's your babe of the week? Uh, my babe of the week is... Um, so the Schmoll and I played... Call of Duty, and we we go on Twitch sometimes. Yeah, we we got the we get the guys on there yeah, here and fun. there. Me and Kevin always fight, so I take breaks. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, we played. So we played with. A, there's a, a three person one. So you get matched up with a random person over the internet. And it was this kid who went by the name of Mino. You know, I don't know his real name, but he was just on fire with the comms. You know, he he was just he was he was our general, and he was just dominating. And you know, it's like two guys who are probably like twice his age and he's like no no go up there he's like no that's bad move down there and he's like directing us the whole way and we we got like second place with this kid so i just wanted to give him a shout out for the um for just you know with the great comms and just helping us through the game it's always nice when when a kid just like dominates the scene like that for I, sure i was really impressed by by him and uh and just uh, shout out to everyone that was watching too. Thanks for watching. <laughs> can can I ask a question about the Schmoll? Yeah. Yeah. Can he ever shed the Schmoll moniker, or is that? I think he likes it too much. Other okay. people could. People people are capable of uh, de schmolling themselves, but he he loves it. So we okay. Yeah. So Kevin loves being the Schmoll. Yeah. Okay. He's the alpha Schmoll. <laughs> He's the rare Schmoll who revels in. His unlikability. Yeah. Yeah. Which kind of is likable. I, yeah. I wonder if, if we were to go out to him and be like, Kevin, how would you feel about not being the schmoll anymore? What are you talking about? Really? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm the schmoll. I'm the schmoll right. daddy. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. So uh -huh. if you if you meet him, make sure you call him schmoll. Uh, I, I, uh, nice to meet you, schmoll. I definitely would. For sure. Yeah. He loves it. Good. I remember when kids were first talking shit to him, like when we labeled him the schmoll, he's like, <laughs> he's like, look, this kid was talking shit to me and I said I was going to bang his mom. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't even there. He's like bragging about this to like strangers, like people who barely knew him. Uh, Small like behavior. He's he's intense. Um, my baby of the week is Dan Hadaya, just a great actor, classic character actor. I think best roles probably are the ones he's most known for. The dad in 
Night of the Roxbury, The Dad in Clueless, and then uh, Bette Midler's ex-husband in The First Wives Club. Can I ask, is it Danny Hedia? I think you just said it better. Thank you. I, I, I was confused by that, but I don't mean to correct you because no, he's you're your right baby on the of the week. So. But he's just a great I, actor, right? He is. Yeah, he's solid. For so sure. good, as, especially in Clueless. He's just yeah. the, you know, he's playing a slickster, but you can tell he's got a heart of gold and he really cares about Cher. And Night of the Roxbury is sort of a similar part. He's a little more of a hard ass. It's a little higher, com- like, you know, a more pointed comedy and then, or heightened comedy rather. And then, but you know, you know, he loves his sons at the end of it. And he, I don't know, he just brings a warmth to all of his parts yeah. with, along with like the kind of irascible personality too. So big up. So I just watched him in searching for Bobby Fisher. Cause I was like, let's see another chess thing. Cause I, I, you know, I saw Queen's Gambit and then I was like, okay, yeah. still a great movie, but he's in it. He's got a little bit part in oh, it. I, yeah. Hmm. Who's your babe of the week? Well, it's boring, but, you know, it's Valentine's Day, or we're coming off of Valentine's Day, so it's Mrs. Fuller. I mean, we had a great weekend. That's nice. She takes great care of me. She takes great care of our kids. One of our dogs is, she's she's just amazing. So that is, she's always going to be my babe of the week. She's always a huge addition when you FaceTime, too. Yeah. Like when oh, she's FaceTime. always there. Yeah, yeah, she's there, and she'll come in and drop some pearls of wisdom. And, and then, then yeah. goes up. Yeah, that's, how, that's, yeah, that's Mrs. Fuller. That's awesome. Thanks. Chad, who's your legend of the week? Uh, my legend of the week, so... Uh, as you guys are aware, I'm I'm a huge, in terms of uh, wardrobe, I like, you know, I, li- I like plain tees, crew neck, and just these these sort of um, these slim fit khakis, you know, colored usually like gray or black, and um, and my go to t shirt was the J Crew Essential Tee, yeah, white, gray, navy, pink. I love the pink. I always rock pink whenever I can. Um, and they stopped making it for some reason, and I I don't know what happened, uh, you know. So, and I was freaking out for a while. I was like, where am I gonna find my T-shirt? Because I I, just, I like I have a very specific, you know, type of T-shirt that I like. You know, the way it fits, the way it feels, you know, the way it shrinks. And so I was on a mission. I'm like, I gotta find my new T-shirt. And so after months of searching, I have found my new t-shirt. Dude. I'm really excited to hear what this is. It's the Buck Mason. I wear it. You wear Buck Mason. I do. I Buck love Mason. Buck Mason. They're awesome. It's a great t-shirt. Great t-shirt. This is Buck Mason, and this is a little, I'm going to let it shrink. It's yeah. a little bit larger than I'd like, but, you know, I have a, a smaller one that's a little bit, you know, tighter fitting, but I, just, I have that exact shirt. Dirty. It looks yeah. better on you, but I have that exact shirt. Oh, thank you. I, uh, I knew it. you're a Buck Mason guy. You, you came it. in styling today, and I was like, you're a Buck <laughs> Not Mason. Not really today. Yeah, you look yeah, good. Yeah, thanks, yeah. buddy. Um, uh, yeah, so shout out to Buck Mason. Thank you for making uh, the special tees. You don't know how much it means to me. That's nice. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Dude, my legend of the week is um, inspirational videos on TikTok. <laughs> I've been digging them, dude. <laughs> yeah. You get some finance guy on there. He's like, look, you can bitch, you can complain, or you could get up and finish the job. And I'm like, hell yeah, man. That's that's right. <laughs> Pumps me up. I get it. Uh, again, well, again, hate to be boring. But after the conversation today, my legend of the week is Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Yes. Because it's just not enough. He's not spoken about enough. Yeah. And uh, he really, he's amazing. He's just amazing. He's awesome. Yeah. He's a hero. He's a hero, for sure. Chad, what's your quote of the week? My quote of the week comes from Basic Instinct. It starts with Sharon Stone, and then we get Michael Douglas's reply. You got some Coke? I got a Pepsi in the fridge. She wants, she means cocaine? Mm-hmm. That's fine. I can do another one, too. What do we do now, Nick? Fuck like minks, raise rugrats, live happily ever after. I hate rugrats. <laughs> Fuck like minks, forget the rugrats, and live happily ever after. It's good. Yeah. Uh, dude, I forgot to bring the Andrew. Ya- I'm reading Andrew Yang's book, um, and it's it's really good. He's he's a really good writer. He's funny, and the quote I wanted to do was something he said about revolution, where it's better to like choose revolution than to like. Uh, you know, it was a quote from someone else. It's better to choose revolution than to like have to endure it or have it thrust upon you. And I was like, oh, that's a forward thinking way to think about how change has to happen. Mm-hmm. But I don't have the exact quote. So instead he had talked about how he got picked on a lot when he was younger for having a small dong, which was all just stereotype, you know, it was just kids being bullies and assholes. Um, and he talked about his response to it. He's like, it made me sad. It made me, um, 
you know, feel vulnerable. And it also made me worried that I did have a small dick. And I was like, dude, nice, Yang. Way to put that in that chapter. I think a lot of people relate to that. And mm -hmm. it made me more excited to get to his, like, you know, take on universal basic income and automation, knowing that he had been through that kind of small dick crisis, like so many of us have. That's yeah. fire. That's good. Um, you know, I said I watched Top Gun this week. And I think that, uh, you know, in Top Gun, instead of saying, I want to raise your stoke, they said, permission to buzz the tower. Mm. I like that quote, permission yeah. to buzz the tower. And it's, he never grants it, but he, he keeps on doing it. I like, I like everything about that. That's epic. You got to buzz the tower. Got to buzz the tower. Is that an innuendo? <laughs> I didn't think about that until just now. I Me mean, neither. Manscaped, maybe. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Buzz like we we might have to throw that into the ads. Okay, cool. Oh, we'll cite you, though. Okay. <laughs> of course. <Yeah. laughs> got to buzz the tower. We'll MLA you. Um, Chat, what's your phrase when we're getting after it? Uh, let's watch a Michael Douglas movie. Nice, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'm a big Michael Douglas guy these days. He's great. Have you ever met him? No. No. I wish I had. What's your phrase that we're getting after it? I think I just did it. Permission to buzz the tower. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to not be that original, but... My, mine is more just like my word of the, these have become like my word of the day really lately but I like this word it's a noun hoi polloi hoi polloi <laughs> hoi polloi <laughs> hoi polloi yeah. yeah the masses common people yeah yeah. bridge and tunnel love it yeah uh, alright Brad I think this was you know everyone's great but I think this one is you my, think this is our best one I think it's my yeah. favorito wow yeah. I really I, I loved it I, I can't tell you if I was sitting here for 15 minutes or 15 hours. It, it just kind of flew by. Two hours and 15 minutes, I think. Wow. You're, you're no our best one. guest. Really? Yeah. yeah. Guys, you know I'll come back anytime. You just have to call me. I'm always here. I'll call you, we shall. Awesome. Awesome. All I right. loved it. Thanks, dude. Oh. If you need advice.